Call the Board of Supervisors into session for the May 16th board meeting. Start the meeting with public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are on the agenda. Please go to the podium, state your name and home address. Individual, individuals wishing to comment on a public hearing will be given the opportunity during that respective hearing. Individual remarks are limited to three minutes. Do we have anyone in chambers wishing to address the board? The mayor of Cascade, Steve Knepper. Steve Knepper, mayor of Cascade, and we're here requesting funding for our public uh, project, which is a uh, library community center, which everybody would be, it'd be just a real asset to our town. Cascades had a lot of um, new uh, business development and our re revitalization of our downtown. And I think a library community center would be a real anchor for good things that are happening, happening in our community. And we'd appreciate your consideration of our funding request. Right. And I think it would be uh, good for everybody in our community and surrounding area for what it would do. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. If anyone else. Good morning. I'm Chantel Orrin. I'm a community member from Cascade. Um, and I also had the unique opportunity to be the project manager for the Community Heart and Soul Project. And I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with that process, um, but the gist of it is Community Heart and Soul um, takes several years to complete and we are completed with that. And it, it makes you go out and get information from everyone in the com community. Sometimes when people need things or want things, you might just hear from that group, for example. Um, but the heart and soul process makes you go out and we get cross section of information from everyone. All voices are heard. That's what drew me to wanting to do the project. So you talk to people that maybe have lived there all their lives, people that have just moved there, people that are older, younger, um, really all voices. And the, the one thing that came out of that, the number one thing under amenity was wanting a new library. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that and that 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 process really, you know, I think you're going to see this from we have a lot of people here from Cascade, but um, it's a very supported desire in the community. And like Steve said, there's surrounding area as well um, within the county. So um, we are just looking for support. So we appreciate. Thank you, Sean. Anyone else wishing to address the board? My name is Melissa Kane, and I'm the library director at Cascade Public Library. I have been there going on 10 years now, and um, I it, it has been an honor and a privilege to me to be able to work with all the wonderful people in Cascade. I have enjoyed every minute of my time there, and um, over my time there, it has become very apparent that we are desperately in need of space. I think that my job is not just to facilitate services that we offer, but to see what the library can be. And I know that it can be so much more than what it is for the community and the surrounding area. Thank you, Melissa. Hello, Amy Modernock. Uh, my address is 25601 Gary Owen Road, Cascade. And I was part of the heart and soul process that Chantel talked about. I also work at the Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque. And um, I am here in support of a new library in Cascade. It, I'm sure you've heard about the dismal reading scores of our third graders and just how important access to books are for kids to be successful in their adult life. And um, when you go by our little library, oftentimes you see low income and minority kiddos that don't have access to books, don't have access to the internet, and it's a safe space for them to go. And Melissa provides wonderful programming. Um, I know recently there was a program around superheroes. There were over 65 kids there and there was just absolutely no space for those kids. So we would really appreciate your support and funding of a new library for our little town. 
Thank you, Amy. Anyone else like to address the board? Uh, good morning, uh, Kathy Weber, um, 817 mm -hmm. 2nd Avenue Northwest Cascade, been a resident. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it back, Kathy. I've got I've got power here. So, um, okay. Uh, I have been a resident of Cascade for um, over 50, over fifteen years. Um, been on the city council and had the pleasure of serving as the uh, library board uh, president for several several years as well. So I've been seeing this as a need for a, a long time and really see that this is the opportunity to take advantage of it, of what can help us really get the get the ball rolling as far as funding. Um, I really appreciate what's been said about what's being done for our for the kiddos in town, but we're practically cradle to grave as far as the opportunities that we provide for the um, the library provides. So there are also programming for um, for elderly folks too. So um, this is a really oppor great opportunity for enhance the environment, enhance the vibrancy of the library with the with this funding so we can get the space and the materials that we want to really grow and expand as we should provide opportunities for our um, for our community. So appreciate your consideration. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. My name is Monica Raker. My address is 420 1st Avenue West Cascade. I am a member of the Cascade Library Board for six years now. I am a lifetime resident of Dubuque County. I used to take my kids to the story hour when they were young. And in defense of Melissa, one of the things I wanna mention is during 2020 and COVID, she didn't skip a beat in providing books for our community. Everybody was so happy with her. And I just ask that you read the letters that were sent to you and they're all sincere and it tells you how badly we need our library. I thank you for your time. I know there's a lot of good causes out there, but just do the best you can for us. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Anyone else? <laughs> Hi, my name is Marie Thomas. I moved to Cascade four years ago and I live at 813 Sixth Avenue in Cascade. I am um, a member, the newest, one of the newest members of the uh, library board and I have an opportunity now that I've retired to be in a community that is very community oriented. One of the things in doing the study that shows that we uh, desperately want and need a library four times the size that we have is that we have no space for projects for the elderly. We have no projects for areas for um, teens. And we know how critically important it is to keep our, ten our teens active and in social programs that are good for them. And we would very much like to have a new library that has space for community programs that we can really interact with them right now. We have um, done a special project and funding to get storyboards along our walkways. We have many active people that are in with our music in the park and so forth. And it's a community that really gets behind things. And so if we just have an ability to get started on this, we have the ability to, to get the rest of the project done. And I really appreciate your time. I know you've got lots and lots of people begging you for money. So thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. Do you have anyone else that'd like to address the board? Seeing no one in chambers. Up front, there's some seating up here. Do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to address the board, Kevin? Uh, I have nobody on Zoom. Okay. We'll move forward. Proclamation. Uh, we have a proclamation from St. Mark's Youth Enrichment Apples for Students. <clears throat> Supervisor McDonough will read that. Apples for Students. Fill the bag project. Whereas since 1988, 
St. Mark Youth Enrichment has existed to work with families of Dubuque to meet some of the unmet needs of their children. And whereas St. Mark Youth Enrichment staff, committees, and board are dedicated to furthering the total learning experience of all children they work with. And whereas St. Mark Youth Enrichment will again be leading the Apples for Students Fill the Bag program in Dubuque County during the months of May, June, and July. This program collects money to buy basic school supplies for children of families who need help purchasing them. To date, St. Mark Youth Enrichment has given out over 38,000 bags of school supplies, and whereas local schools and human service agencies help St. Mark Youth Enrichment identify the 3,500 children in grades K through 12 who need school supplies this year. And whereas St. Mark Youth Enrichment invites the people of Dubuque County to donate money to this program, so school supplies can be purchased in bulk from local merchants and serve more children than they usually do. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Supervisors of Dubuque County, Iowa, on behalf of the staff and the citizens of Dubuque County, do hereby proclaim the months of May, June, and July be designated for the collection of money to buy basic school supplies for needy children in the city of Dubuque and urge the people of Dubuque County to participate in this worthwhile project by supporting St. Mark Youth in Richmond <coughs> in, their effort, in their effort toward helping our children. Dubuque County Board of Supervisors proclamation adopted the 16th day of May, 2022. I will make a motion to approve the proclamation. I will second. You have a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Carries. We have someone to address the board on this. Good morning. I'm Beth McGorry, the Director of Donor Relations at St. Mark Youth Enrichment. First of all, all of you showing up today and doing this, this isn't easy. You're amazing. <clears throat> really You're fabulous. Um, and as we move into this, we're the only ones I think thinking of school supplies. It's May. We've got like three weeks left of school and our kids are ready to ditch their crayons and ditch their markers. Um, but we've been identifying um, over 3,600 children in Dubuque County who are going to be in need of school supplies. The real number is 5,000 free and reduced lunch kids in our county. And we will take care of 3,600 over the course of the next three months. Um, what school supplies do for a kiddo on the first day is absolutely amazing. I talked to a first grade teacher and her response to having supplies for her kids was, these kids feel loved and cared for. And um, when they find out that they were given with love, um, they know that that first day of school is um, better for them. We know that our kids feel the um, stress of parents. Um, they know that the cost of gas and the cost of food um, gets into their life, whether they know it or not. And um, adding a $47 bag of school supplies to mom and dad's stressor um, is something that we'd like to relieve. And that's our goal, is to relieve that stress from our families. A few years back, right during um, the, the height of the, well, the beginning of the pandemic, I, I met a mom who had come to the back to school bash and she'd gotten there late. Um, we ran out of books to give away. We ran out of, you know, testers and um, thermometers and all of these things. And she broke down and started crying. And um, when I told her that her child is going to receive school supplies at their school because they were a Title I school, she completely lost it. She has four kids in Title I school and would have had to pay over $200 in school supplies, and she didn't have it. And that stress is even worse today with the um, rise of inflation and all of the things. Our parents might be making $15 an hour working in a fast food place, but with $4 gallon of gas, it doesn't go very far. And so we're requesting um, that the county steps up and takes care of these kids because we know that you will. That's the, the cool thing about this is this project. Um, when I started, we were serving 1,200 kids eight years ago. Um, my goal was that we would take care of all of our Title I school kiddos. And um, the pandemic pushed us forward to do that sooner, um, realizing that our families are more in need than we thought they were. Um, so on... Wednesday, Great Give Day, which happens to be the largest giving day of um, Dubuque County. Um, we will be kicking off our Apples for Students Fill the Bag funding project. Um, so we're inviting folks to our open house 
for cookies and treats because one of the added bonuses that we're gonna do is we're adding notes to every single bag that goes home with our kids. And that note is gonna be a note from you and a note of love and good luck. Um, we know that our kids, um, I have a, a really cute little sweet friend, Shamari, and gave him a backpack full of backs, backpack and supplies. And he goes to me, he's like, Beth, Miss Beth, these are, are these all for me? And he's like, yes, buddy, these are yours. These are your supplies that you don't have to share. And um, so many of our kids living in poverty, whether it's in downtown Dubuque or rural Iowa, all want to feel like that first day of school is special to them. And so by you coming and visiting, dropping off notes of um, support, we'll have some there for you. And um, from one to four on Wednesday, we will have cookies shaped in school supplies made by Cascade's own Copus Creations. I'm not gonna lie, you know, everyone cheer, yep. And gosh, that was, what perfect, how perfect is that today? Oh my goodness. But um, we're asking the county to come out $47 a bag, we'll um, take care of our kids. And one of the best parts, or not best, but even a neater part about all of this is that all of the supplies are being purchased just locally through Hardwick Drugs, and which means that every dollar in the county given to St. Mark will be spent in the county. And um, that's one of the first, it's the first time we've ever been able to say that 100%. And we're thankful for our fan, friends over at Hardwick Drug to um, make sure we take care of all of this. We had to order our supplies in January because of supply issues. We all know this, right? Um, a few years back, we had to order and we only got 90% or 10% of our supplies and had to go shopping everywhere. So um, Charlie at Hardig's um, really has stepped up and come through and made sure that um, we're going to have everything that we need for all of our kids on the first day of school. So thank you. Beth, if we can't make it on Wednesday, what's a good way for us to get donations to you? Um, you can visit our website um, at www.stmarkyouthenrichment.com. And there's a lovely little donate button in the top right-hand corner. Um, so $47 a bag. Um, and I ask that everyone, if you can, do what you can do um, and to share the love with our Dubuque County kids. Thank you, Beth. Did you want to get a picture? <laughs> and stop harassing the citizens. <laughs> <laughs> move to the approval of minutes of the May 9th meeting. Uh, any corrections or anything noted? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the May 9th meeting. All in favor signify by aye. 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 There are no consent items this meeting, uh, no procurements. Uh, public hearing, there's notice of public hearing, fiscal year 22, Budget amendment number three, Stella Rundy. Good morning, everyone. Stella Rundy, I'm the Dubuque County Budget Director. Uh, we have on the agenda and uh, posted up on the screen there, the final budget amendment for our FY22 uh, budget year. Um, we're proposing to set a public hearing on that budget on May 31st at 5.30 p.m. I wanna point out that that is a Tuesday um, because that is the Tuesday after Memorial Day. So it's a little um, different than our normal schedule. So I wanted to point that out. And um, I can answer any questions for you. I can walk through it if you would like me to, to do that now. It's an evening meeting, yes. Do you just want to go through the amendment at all? Sure. Happy to do that. So on this form, this is... a. Uh, given to us by the state of Iowa. So we fill out um, their standard form. Um, in the 
first column of numbers, it's the budget as we have last certified or amended it. So that's the budget that's currently in place. The second column would be the items that we're proposing to amend. And then the third column is the total budget after the amendment. So we're making some small changes to revenues um, in some intergovernmental things, um, adjusting to some actual numbers. So we're taking revenue up by $138,000. And then um, in our expenditures, which would be the bottom half of the page, um, it goes through different um, operating areas. So public safety and services, physical health, uh, mental health walks through. Um, some of the major changes in there would be um, the uh, share of storage building. We are not moving forward with that project, but we agreed to move some of that fund funding um, to the sheriff's budget to help with the jail renovation. We said we would look at that at the end of the year, so we're, we're moving some funding there. Um, the mental health services, um, we will be done providing those services at the county level um, as of June 30th. So there's a bunch of small adjustments in there. We're also taking that fund balance down to zero um, through this amendment. So every dollar that we have available is budgeted now into that area. Um, um, the first um, American Rescue Plan Act project has made it into the official budget at this point, which be the radio um, and communication equipment. So that's the biggest part of the amendment that is um, almost 870,000 of the, the total change. Okay. Any questions for Stella? Not at this time. Motion to approve the notice of public hearing. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the notice of public hearing for May 31st at 5.30 meeting. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Gary, thank you, Stella. There are no plats for approval at this meeting. Uh, action items. We have a resolution approving the special events permit application for Dubuque Main Street and the smokestack. Um, Chair Potoff, I just want to make a correction. The the permit is issued um, for the smokestack in the Dubuque County Energy District. That is the ones who are proposing, who have submitted that and have proposed or have provided their certificates of insurance. So it is the Dubuque County Energy District and the smokestack. Okay, I can reread that. Okay. Approving a special events permit application for Dubuque Energy District and the smokestack. I believe that was. Is it in the resolution that way? In the resolution, it does not state that, but it's for June 5th, I believe. Concert. We'll update the resolution to reflect that it's with the energy district. Um, like I said, they also provided the certificate of insurance that covers the county for it. Table for next week. I will second that. Table, you said, Anne? Yes. I have a motion to second to table the special events permit. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the allocation of project funds for the Makoka to River Water Management Authority for the county's ARPA allocation. I believe that was in the amount of $42,775. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution of the Mukokta River Water Management Authority resolution that runs right through Cascade. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the allocation of project funds for the Mukokta River Water Management Authority. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the necessary documents with Jim Schroeder construction for the bridge replacement on Conrad Lane. Project L B23, parentheses 04 73 31. I believe we have Anthony on Zoom. Yeah, good morning, Supervisors. If you have any questions, um, I uh, fully recommend this, uh, this contract uh, move forward with Jim Schrader on this project. 
Thank you, Anthony. Uh, in the amount of $122,525 and 10 cents. Questions for Anthony? I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the necessary documents with Jim Schroeder construction for the bridge replacement on Conrad Lane, project L B23 parentheses 04 73 31. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the necessary documents with CJ Moyna and Sons and River City Stone for the supply and delivery of maintenance rock for the Dubuque County Secondary Road Department. Anthony, again. Yeah, so we received um, bids for various various areas throughout the county for applying contract rock. Um, and and uh, so we had a few different bidders. The, uh, the low bidders are listed here in the table for the various districts. So I'm, I'm recommending that uh, we award uh, the, uh, the various areas to River City Stone or CJ Boyna. Thank you, Anthony. Any questions for Anthony? We'll make a motion to approve the rock contract. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the necessary documents with CJ Moyna and Sons and River City Stone for delivery and maintenance rock. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve necessary documents with origin design agreement for construction, engineering, and observation services for the improvement to the Northwest Arterial slash D10 slash South John Deere Road, West John Deere Road project. Anthony. Good morning again. So we have a uh, STBG uh, grant through uh, uh, DMATS that will be applied towards this, this particular uh, contract. Um, this is for the, the John Deere Northwest Arterial project. Um, so this is the hiring for consultant, uh, co uh, construction engineering um, inspection. And this, this particular contract is only for the Dubuque County John Deere area. Um, there is a, a, the ability to, for the city to flex into this, to, uh, to add some uh, uh, support on their end, but this is specifically just for Dubuque County. Um, so this has been through the DOT audit process um, where we are, we and they, uh, as the county and the DOT, reviewed all the cost items, um, cost proposal items that uh, Origin Design put forward um, and made sure that, uh, you, know, you know, nothing was overpriced or anything like that. So um, it's been fully vetted through the DOT process, and I'm recommending that we move forward with this. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Any questions? To approve the resolution. I will second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the necessary documents with origin design. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have a resolution to approve the traffic safety improvement program funding agreement for the purchase of portable traffic control devices for countywide use. Anthony again. Yeah, so uh, about a year ago, we applied for a TSIP um, application for. Uh, portable traffic signals. And uh, we were awarded, I think it's $56,000 um, to go purchase these units. Um, so this would be the agreement to kind of officially tie us to this project. Um, it explains the, you know, sort of the reimbursement process that we have to go procure it ourselves, um, purchase the units and then ask for reimbursement. Um, so, you know, we're expecting um, this to be 100% funded through this uh, TSIP program. So it'll be a Nice little addition. We'll use this throughout the county. Um, whenever we have a, you know, a maintenance project or something else that causes a sort of one lane closure um, that we can actually set up these signals to, to control that scenario versus having to put out a couple flaggers and, and you know, that kind of setup. Any questions? I have none. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for the grant funding. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the TSIP program funding agreement. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Thank you, Anthony. Next, we have a resolution authorized to chair, sign a letter of support, ECIA, applying for grant opportunities. The grant opportunity regarding baseball? I believe this has to do with 
the baseball for uh, their, I believe they're applying to the DRA for funds to uh, come up with opportunities for uh, the small communities. Ed Raber is here. He can speak to that a little more. This is Ed Raber, and I, uh, yes, you. I think you hit it, or Supervisor Potoff. They communicated with me late in the week, just before the packet went to uh, publication, requesting a letter of support. They will be applying at least for one uh, pro, um, grant, uh, I believe, from the uh, Dubuque Racing Association, but potentially others. So it doesn't. This letter doesn't particularly call out that one. They may use it for other things as well. Um, in some discussions with some of the um, mayors at the last ECA mayors meeting, they identified some opportunities that may arise as the field of dreams is further developed, uh, uh, both in sky, scale and scope, as well as programming. And they're hoping to um, get some resources to help them collaborate with those small communities to identify what those might be and how they could pursue them. Good. Motion Any questions? to approve the resolution. And I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Approving uh, letter of support for ECIA. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next for correspondence or communications. We have, court. Uh, we have the Piazza Urban Renewal Area Amendment and the City of Asbury. You're just looking to receive and file both of those. I will make a motion to receive and file both communications from City of Asbury and the City of Piasta. I have a motion and a second to receive and file the Piasta Urban Renewal Area Amendment and the City of Asbury. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Next, we have appointments, uh, open vacancies for information only. Anyone that would be interested in applying for any of the boards, we will be filling vacancies in June, I believe, correct? It's an extensive number of terms that are ending that um, relate to the Food Policy Council zoning. Um, so if folks are interested in, in looking into that, our website would have additional information to support these. Thank you, Ann. Uh, personnel requisition. Yeah, personnel requisition for uh, part-time mental health assistant, which would be to replace Jesslyn, who had gone to another position. Any questions regarding that, Don? Um, this is currently vacant. It was previously a full-time position. Um, the, the director identified that this could move to a part-time position. Um, so she's requesting that this get filled as of July 1st, because that is when the region has funding for it, because uh, Dubuque County is fully reimbursed for all employment expenses of this position. I'll make a motion to approve the personnel requisition. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the personnel requisition for part-time MHDS assistant. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Curious. Go to public comment. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are of concern to that person and which are not agenda items. Please go to the podium, state your name and home address. Please be aware that the board is limited in their ability to respond to such inquiries. And Iowa code prohibits the board from deliberating or acting on items not appearing on the agenda. Individual remarks are limited to three minutes. Do we have anyone wishing to address the board? Mr. Kirkendall? Good morning. Uh, my name is Richard Kirkendall. I live at 1725 Alta Place here in Dubuque. I've been working as an assistant county attorney here in Dubuque since March 1st of 2018. I have worked consistently as a prosecutor for the county since that day. Uh, I have a strong record of performance in that role, including securing convictions everywhere from misdemeanors to class A felonies. Uh, I have never resigned from that job. I've never given a notice of resignation. I've never otherwise willingly walked away from my work, uh, which I regard as a perfect fit for me. 
Uh, since my days in the Army JAG Corps, I have valued and respected the role of a prosecutor, and I think I understand it very well. It pains me to see the state that the county attorney's office is in currently. Uh, particularly now, the office needs experienced prosecutors who are willing to put in the work uh, and contribute to the administration of justice. Um, there are real world consequences to the way that the office is currently being mismanaged. Um, and there are no attorneys in the county attorney's office today who have the experience that I do trying complicated felonies. That experience is necessary for the successful operation of that office. The actions of the Dubuque County Attorney and the Human Resources Department leading up to the events of last week have been highly irregular and require scrutiny by you. You, the county attorneys, are the only elected officials in Dubuque who can exercise any sort of oversight over their actions. Please shine a public light on what went on during the investigation over the last two months leading up to the events of last week. As you know, I have filed a grievance under the collective bargaining agreement between my union and the county. Uh, normally, that would be a confidential process, but both Mr. May and myself have made public comments about it. Uh, I hope we can resolve that as expeditiously as possible. I don't intend to discuss the merits of any claims at this point. I do hope you will agree to move forward with releasing the investigator's report. I also hope you are taking special care of the employees who are still left in the county attorney's office, especially ones who preceded Mr. May and who are still subject to his mismanagement. The office cannot afford to lose any more capable uh, and experienced attorneys or staff. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Richard. Richard, while you're there, I would just direct you to McMurray versus Lee, Lee County Board of Supervisors, 261 Northwest 2nd, 688, 1970. Also, the Iowa Attorney General's opinion stating that it is the elected officials who are in charge and are responsible for their departments. The union contracts come before us and you'll see quite clearly what I'm discussing when you read those cases. Thank you, Supervisor McDonough. I, I think you do have supervision, especially over the human resources department. So I ask you to exercise that. But not over you, sir. Chair, are we in public comment? I'd urge you to reconsider comment. that, Ms. McDonough. Thank you. Thank you. We need a break or forward. Well, according to what you said, we weren't to deliberate. So I assume we're in public comment. No, we weren't deliberating. I wasn't. I wasn't. And I believe just gave some direction as to case law that just want the public to be heard. Okay. Do we need a break or can we continue on? Motion for a five minute recess. Oh, we, oh sorry. Rich? Yeah, we're still in. Anything that's not on the agenda? Sure. Yep. Sorry, I didn't see you there. My bad. Rich uh, Miski. 3199 Sheridan Road, but uh, I get together with a couple other folks, but uh, Randy was here with me and we were dealing with some uh, election integrity uh, questions, but he asked if a chance comes up, American uh, Rescue Funds plans, I think you're working on that. Uh, can we uh, put a proposal in to get rid of the mach voting machines and uh, go to simply manual paper uh, ballots and uh, count them manually? If need need be, I guess there's such a thing as a machine verifier that uh, could be used in order to prevent any kind of outside uh, interferences with uh, uh, voting voting ballots and voting machines and of that sort. We could put that proposal forward possibly for that uh, rescue fund plan. Okay. We cannot deliberate on that, Richard. Thank you. That's for five minutes. Down with public comment. Anyone else wish to address the board? If anyone on Zoom wishing to address the board, Kevin? Uh, nobody is making themselves available on Zoom. I will second that motion to recess for 
Five minutes. I have a motion and a second to recess for five minutes. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 We'll return at 9.45.
I know. So, so if I can't out. hear, it's going to just be interrupted a lot. Call the Board of Supervisors back into session. We'll start our morning work sessions. Uh, but a work session to discuss the external external ARP AI application from the Cascade Public Library. Lisa. Advise that they need to be extreme. Do you want to advise they need to be very loud? Because we're trying to run air conditioning and when yeah. that happens. We can't yeah, hear speakers very well. I am a loud talker. You don't have to worry. <laughs> Ladies at church liked when I read at church because they can always hear me. <laughs> so don't worry. I am Lisa Cotter, the interim city administrator for the city of Cascade to be here to present to you some information as you consider your ARPA funding. And as you know, we submitted our application requesting $1 million for your consideration. <clears throat> I can proceed. So we want to welcome you to our library. Whether you've been there or not, we wanted to at least give you a little experience about the Cascade Library. So this is the front of our building. We're right on First Avenue, which people in Cascade refer to as Main Street. When I looked on the map, I did not see a Main Street. So I had to figure out that we refer to Main Street, which is First Avenue. So this is here right in the middle of our downtown, um, a cherished little building that has had lots of great years since 1968. Can move on. Uh, as people had explained earlier under public comment, we have adult programming, we have tech areas, and we have children's space. This is walking into the main part uh, for the supervisors. I know that Ed sent you the PowerPoint, which does have a video. We're not going to show it here today. But as you move off to the right, there's a small area for technology. And this is really our only main space that we have in the library. You can proceed. You can see here a very small number of chairs. And so whenever we want to have programming, it's very challenging that people are, you know, really tight in those spaces and that we don't have opportunities to really provide larger programming. Um, and Melissa does a great job as our director. And unfortunately, sometimes you can see here people off to the right standing. And so it's challenging to provide that quality uh, space that is needed when you have programming. You can proceed. The children's area, again, in the video, this would go off to the right. There's a small table, you can see that work, uh, that play table. And then there's a small round table that'll fit about four kids. So as they explained, when we have 65 young people coming, it really isn't a safe environment for them, especially when we reflect upon the last few years and how we space ourselves out much differently. Go ahead. So as you can see, this is a reasonable amount of space and there's only about 20 kids there. Uh, and this was one of the small, or for the younger people, one of the programs that Melissa had planned. And we simply just don't have enough room. Go ahead. This is our checkout area where people can check out materials. And then off to the left is a small office where our staff is able to work. Melissa has a desk in there. And what you're looking at at those windows on the back side of the picture is the small technology area where we have some, some computers. So we want you to know we've been planning. This is not a whim because of ARPA money. We've been planning uh, similar to Farley. FEH has been a great asset to our community going through the SPARC process, making sure, uh, as Chantal had said, that heart and soul was the entire community's process. And we did the same thing, making sure it's important that we as leaders are not making decisions that don't reflect the needs of the entire community. And so this process uh, we did not provide, I think um, I sent the entire book, but in the packet, we just tried to select some of the more important uh, parts of this booklet. And so you have the opportunity to look at, but it's very similar to the process that uh, was done in Farley and FEH has been a great asset for us as a community to go through this process and to objectively look at what we have and what our needs are. <clears throat> we recognize that as supervisors of the county, that your sole uh, concern cannot be the residents of Cascade, that when you make decisions, you need to make sure that you're making them in the best interest of all taxpayers for Dubuque County. And so while our small library is funded strictly by the city of Cascade, we want you to know as you make these ARPA decisions uh, that we do serve people in the rural parts of Dubuque County. When you, there's two ways to look at numbers within the library system. One is households that have cards and take out, um, take out materials. And we have 287 households that are not within the city limits, but outside 
um, in unincorporated areas that are taking advantage of the Cascade Library, which I think is important as you consider how you're going to allocate your ARPA funds. A second way to look at it, you can proceed, is materials. So when we check out materials, you can see how many come from residents of the city of Cascade and again, there's 4,205 pieces of material coming from the Cascade Library that benefit those people that also are represented by you as the county board. As I believe Melissa stated or someone stated in their uh, public comment, our current library is 2,200 square feet. When we went through the SPARC process and worked with FEH, we almost uh, quadruple in our needs. Uh, the long-term needs of the library to look out 50 years. We need that 7,300 square feet. Our greatest needs are shortage areas, our children, teens, and technology areas that were um, most in need of, of what we have and really what we believe is appropriate for our next phase of new construction. This is just a sketch. Uh, our number one site, if you've been to Riverview Park, you can see there on the right is where we have our amphitheater, we have Rock the River concerts. Pierce Street is the road to the right, and then there's three lots. One is vacant, the one to the right, where you just see that curved uh, pathway. And then there are two homes that we are working to get rights of first refusal to make sure that our ideal site where the library board would prefer for this facility to be located, continuing to remain in the downtown area a walkable place for people. Obviously people coming from the rural areas would need to travel there either way, but we wanna make sure that it continues to be accessible uh, in the easiest way possible for the highest number of people within Cascade. We're also working with FEH now that we've done some additional uh, uh, planning to start looking at more specific designs. Originally it was very um, just kind of the renderings. This is getting into more schematic designs so you can see here how it would be very different in terms of the number of shelves, uh, both in the adult area, the children's area, and then having open space for events. Again, as the mayor said, our hope is to, okay, our hope is to also create a usable space that's not strictly for purposes of the library. Our total budget as estimated with the 7,300 square feet is $3.4 million. And in your uh, request, application, you'll see a detailed breakdown of how the $3.4 million is allocated. It includes constructions and furnishings. Our plan with the city council, although they have uh, asked us to come before you to look at fundraising opportunities, which we're working with uh, Amy at the foundation, our goal is to have the city through a bond effort spend one to $1.5 million. Fundraising would be the same amount you know, having some flexibility depending on what sort of fundraising we can do. And then as you know, we have requested from ARPA funds from Dubuque County, the $1 million. We are also on the agenda for May 24th to go before the Jones County Board as well, recognizing that as a dual county community, it's important that we go to both uh, groups of supervisors. One of the things that we've learned, I've learned new, and I, I can't say that I'm an expert on it, but one of the things that we know is important to you is having the library accessible to people all throughout Dubuque County. And what I've learned is that uh, in the Dubuque County Library Advisory Group, uh, that there's a sort of interworkings as to the rules of how things work on what accessibility libraries have. And I think one of the things that we want to encourage is that we all start thinking outside of the box. As funds become more restrictive, we have to be able to work with our communities, even in an ideal situation where perhaps they're not taxing to the level that we should. And so we have our neighbors, from my understanding, in Bernard that do not allocate their library funding directly to a library. And so unfortunately, the people in that community under our current system throughout the county do not have direct access. We welcome them to our library. We welcome them to come and utilize Within the facility, they can look at things, they can use the computers, but the challenge that we have is that our current system does not allow us to allow them to have a library card and check materials out. My proposal looking forward would be to say to the city council, let's meet with the city of Bernard and talk about creative ways to allow them to use our, our library. Even if for one year, we take a leap of faith and say, let's just let them come and see what sort of usage that is. And instead of asking them in a leap of faith to just pay their $27 per person, that's what they tax, 
Uh, we'll let your residents come say, this is again, my proposal to the city council. I'm not saying it's approved or it really isn't in our system right now uh, to allow us to do that. But if we were to say for one year, city of Bernard residents come to the library and utilize the services that you can. And then after the fact, let's talk about what kinds of contributions Bernard would be willing to make. Not that they have to adjust their budget so extremely to give us all those dollars, um, but these, these facilities are meant to be collaborative as resources are more restrictive, we all need to think more regionally and not think strictly within our boundaries. Uh, we serve more than Cascade and it benefits us to, to serve those around us. And hopefully when we're in need of something that perhaps a neighboring community can do, uh, they would reciprocate in a different way. And so that's our goal. Um, but from what I understand, there does need to be some new thinking um, and new ability to be creative in those ways because the rules as they stand today don't really allow us to be creative in that way. Go ahead. As you saw in your packet, or actually wasn't in the actual packet, but I believe that uh, Mr. Raber sent them to you on Friday. We have 41 letters of support uh, generated in a very uh, short amount of time. And what we hope that shows you as you consider your ARPA funding is that there, uh, again, are not a very small number of leaders in Cascade asking for this, but this really is the community. And I would ask everybody from Cascade briefly to just stand up so that you can see, although only a few people spoke, uh, that it's important to us and everyone here uh, seated in those four rows does represent the community and recognizes that our library is important to our future and the vibrancy of, of Cascade. Thank you. Go ahead. That was that one. Just go ahead. So we just want to thank all three of you for listening to our presentation. We recognize that this process isn't easy, uh, just as we have to make decisions each year at a local level, as you do, that it's important for you uh, as the responsible parties for allocating those funds to make good decisions. And we respect whatever those decisions are, uh, but wanted to make sure that you were well aware of our project, what, it, what the need is in the community, um, and that our hope is, is that you will find it within the ARPA funds for Dubuque County to allocate $1 million to the Cascade Library. That's it, if you have any questions. Thank you, Lisa. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, like the uh, creative thinking on trying to get others involved. I would agree. Questions from my colleagues? Uh, thank you, yeah. I. Uh, I Certainly enjoy the presentation and Thank the uh, letter support were very unique as well. Some handwritten, some colorful, some your typical business letterhead. So it was good to see that community involvement. My question revolves around your time frame. If you've had a discussion related to uh, goals or you know, time frame when you want to start the project and when ultimately you'd like to, to have it open. So we recognize with ARPA funding, obviously we all have guidelines that we have to have things um, set for sure by 24 and spent by 26. So number one, that is absolutely um, acceptable and would have it done in that time frame. In an ideal situation, what I believe would happen is that we'd finish planning this year. Uh, we'd get construction documents ready in 23. My intent with the city council when we went over our borrowing capacity with state limitations on the 5% is that we would uh, go out to bond and to, to get those, the issuance would be in early 24 and then be able to start construction in 24. So then we'd have, you know, a, a building of that size would probably take a full construction year. So hopefully uh, the final goal would be to open the facility sometime in summer of 25, which again would allow all of us to use ARPA funding appropriately within the time frame. Um, but in terms of I'm not sure what, because I haven't been here before, but certainly we would not be looking. I know that, you know, we each get two different allocations. By no means, if we had the commitment from the board, we wouldn't really need the money until mid-24 to early 25. And so certainly that helps. You know, we're not looking for funding today. And I know you'll get your second allocation come the first of the year. I think we received our allocation, did we not, Stella? for it so we didn't get the second one. batch right so um my familiarity with cascade is because i read your paper and i have some key citizens who keep me informed and um i know the heart and soul program so amy shout out to you and jason isis at the foundation 
I think I see here um, well exhibited what Heart and Soul is intended to do is to bring that community voice together to make big things happen. And so I, I see that for real. I also know Cascade has a history of doing big projects and getting big projects done. Your pool is the most recent example where you said we needed that. There are young people who uh, valued that and would pay to have a pool and um, you're done. It's open, it's ready to go. So well done there. Um, how we, you know, maybe you can answer um, Lisa, maybe it will be Melissa, but um, the actual cost to each citizen that you currently tax per capita for Cascade residents, what is their library levy? I'm not sure directly what the levy is. The budget's about 150,000. Yes, I would say yes. I believe it's around $65 per citizen. So the supervisors in our budget, we provide $36 for citizens who live in the unincorporated areas and you're taxing citizens at $65. So it's a higher uh, rate of taxation for a municipal library, just like it is in Dyersville where citizens there pay, I think 110 or $115 per person. And Melissa, you, you live in Dyersville, I believe. Yes, I do. So we have those inequities of where municipal and certainly in Dubuque as well has its own library. Each of those are taxing the citizens at a different rate to meet the operational expense. So how do you make a new library happen? It's through fundraising, bond, debt, <clears throat> and then also the ARPA funds present an, an opportunity for that as well. So um, you know, I, I know that you'll get this done, whether we give you enough funding to begin or we're your final grant. Um, and I appreciate very much that you're not asking us to do the whole lift. Um, I saw on your Facebook page, the Aquin students are already bringing in is it change or something? I mean, it's what you're, it's underway. It's a it's a topic in the community that you need to start fundraising for the library. So, yes, the Aquin students had an out of uniform day where they raised one hundred thirty four dollars and ninety nine cents. So, that is that 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 is our We've started. Yes. Started. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> Actually, and, and the Cascade High School students, I mean, without seeing the, the character of the letters, it, it's, it's very touching to me. I, I called your mayor on Friday when I received them. He was at Menard. He's like, Ann, I'm in the checkout line. Like, but Mr. Mayor, you have to see, you have to hear how amazing the letters were that the whole community came to look together. And um, that really, to me, you, you can't know how presentations come before us, but this sets a bar. A new standard is here, so um, well, truly well. Done. Over the weekend, I received five more letters past <laughs> the uh, deadline, so we'll we'll forward those on to you. But those letters, I I had an opportunity to sit down and read them all Friday after three, which was my deadline, and they really touched my heart. It felt so good just to read those letters and know how valued the library is by the community and how they believe in us. Anything further? Yeah. Um, no, good. Thank you again for allowing us to present today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Move on to our next work session. Uh, update from the Board of Health. Good morning, I'm Sandra Larson. I'm the current chair of the Board of Health. I'd like to thank you this morning for inviting us to come. Uh, the Department of Health, um, Samantha Cloft is with me and um, uh, we're just happy to be able to give you a little update of what's happening with the department. 
Um, I'll be honest with you, we are feeling uh, somewhat uh, some urgency with um, everything that's happening. So um, I'm glad that we have this chance to talk with you this morning. First of all, um, I would just say that um, we want to thank you for your continued support. Just last week, I think it was you increased or you allowed the um, position for the clerk five uh, position to be posted and applications have come in and we're going forward with that full-time position. We appreciate that. Um, our assistant director, interim director, Samantha Cloft has submitted her resignation. Um, she will be leaving on eight, uh, August 12th. Um, I wanna congratulate Samantha. She uh, was accepted into a very competitive um, PhD program in public health. She'll be going to the University of Massachusetts and getting a PhD in public health and doing great things thereafter. Um, we congratulate her, um, but we will miss her. And um, the date that she'll be leaving is August 12th. Now, um, at the Board of Health meeting this Wednesday, we'll be discussing uh, what to do with Samantha's position. Um, we, have, we are in the process of uh, recruiting a director. And I wanted to share a little bit about the timeline there. Uh, we're using uh, GovHR to be our recruiter. They've provided us with a timeline. Uh, May 13th was the close of applications. We extended that for one week just to get late comers. And um, as of the 7th of May, we were informed that there had been several applications with the minimum requirements. So that was good news. Um, the timeline shows that we'll be starting interviewing in, on uh, the week of June 13th or June 20th. Um, and then hiring uh, or the start date for the new person to begin employment would be mid to late July. Uh, but to be realistic with this timeline, it's going to be probably late July. And Samantha is leaving August 12th. So we are feeling a little, urge, a little bit of um, urgency uh, and um, that kind of leads to our ARPA request that we wanted to talk about today. As you know, back in September, uh, the Board of Health submitted a, a, re a request for $1,347,000 to increase our department from four full-time um, people to seven full-time people. And um, as you know, you have a Board um, of Health. We have two MDs <coughs> on the board. We have one uh, gentleman who's experienced in uh, industry and business and volunteering. We have a master's of public health who also has a PhD in pharmacy. We have um, a member who is a brain health expert. And we have a member who is a nurse and an attorney. They're all dedicated and capable leaders and we're anxious um, to move forward for the county. We have identified that <clears throat> our capacity to protect and promote the health of our community is hindered by the leanness of the department. Um, Dr. Schultz shared a letter with me that he shared that he sent to you. And I think he put it so well that I would like to share some of his words with you today. Dr. Schultz said, the past two years have taught us all about how important an adequate and functioning public health department and a working public health infrastructure is. Although very small compared to the size of the population they serve, the Dubuque County Department of Public Health and its partners have stepped up and done a phenomenal job during the pandemic. The requested funding of the Dubuque County Department of Public Health through the ARPA plan would not only allow the department to serve the community better, but also be better prepared for future challenges other than infections, such as um, they are already emerging again, such as the need for brain health services, help with addiction and obesity, just to name a few. So Dr. Schultz um, has uh, noted as long as with the Board of Health that 
the leanness of our department is really hindering what we can do to prepare the county for the future. And I'll just um, remind uh, the board of uh, supervisors that you did sign a proclamation for us back in April and we appreciated that. But in that proclamation, it reminds us that the US life expectancy dropped from uh, 2014 to 2017 in the longest sustained decline since the Great Recession and only in 2018 began to increase again. US life expectancy then dropped again in 2020 by a full year, which is the largest drop in life expectancy since 1943. And also in this proclamation, it mentions that the rural areas are hindered by several things such as obesity, uh, difference in health status, poor mental health, and drug use. That's rural areas, that's where we are. We have things, we have programs that can be initiated that will help the county. So um, we are just asking that our uh, request for ARPA be um, acted upon as we interview for this new director position. I think it's integral that we're able to tell this person, not only tell this person, but that we know how big our department will be um, because it's gonna take a different kind of person. If we have a two member department, that takes a different leader than a growing department that's going to grow to seven. Um, I've been asked, um, there's some concern, are we gonna hire these people immediately? Well, we would like the funding immediately, but in real, you know, to be realistic, we're in the midst of hiring a director right now. We may, I, I assume the Board of Health may decide to fill Samantha's position. And we have a clerk position that is in flux. So realistically, will the new people be hired immediately? I don't know, but probably not. Um, but our goal would be, we want to know how big the department is so we know what kind of director to hire. And also it would be a selling um, uh, factor for that person to accept the job. So again, we just wanna thank you for your support and we would ask you to continue that support <clears throat> by acting upon the ARPA request as soon as possible. And Samantha may wanna say a few words too. I don't have much else to add. Um, I totally agree with everything that Sandra said. Um, and I thank the Board of Health, the Board of Supervisors, and also the VNA and City Health and our other community partners for all their support throughout all this craziness. Um, but as she mentioned, I did submit a resignation um, for the end of this summer. And I provided that to the Board of Health and the Board of Supervisors um, with a three month notice so that we can prepare for this transition and be ready to um, move on when the time comes and not take a pause in the work that we've been doing. Um, and really, I believe that's the essence of public health work. Let's be pre prepared and prevent a, a flop or a scramble um, when time comes where I may be leaving in August and there is um, yet to fill the director position. Um, but with that being said, the next three months um, are an exciting time. I think it's a time where we can accomplish a lot. I'm not checking out uh, because I've submitted my resignation, so I want that to be known as well. I'm here to support the Board of Health and what they do and the supervisors as well, um, and excited to see what we can accomplish. So more support from you all, like Sandra said, having a defined um, you know, idea for what our department might look like by the end of the summer would be really helpful for us as we continue to plan moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. You will be missed at the Board of Health. I'm here to tell you, you're, you've done outstanding work since I've been here and I appreciate all the work you've done. Uh, I know we have discussed the ARP proposal for the Board of Health. Uh, I think there was general consensus for moving forward with that. I don't know that we're in agreement as to where that ends at this point. Uh, I guess on one side, I think it should be a budget issue because it's going to be an ongoing expense uh, that it should just be put into the budget and work forward that way because the ARP funds are supposedly a one-time thing. Uh, the other concern I'd have is I'd like to have the new director 
decide which ones to move forward. But I understand Sandra's thing, you kind of need to know how many positions she's going to have. But with all the new people, it's at one time you're going to have chaos too because we're losing Samantha. We're trying to fill the director's position. And it, there's a lot going on right now. It's, it's definitely going to be a difficult situation for the next few months. I'm hoping that we can get moving on a new director uh, and things move forward with that. Uh, would help a lot. Um, yeah, so that certainly that search is going forward, but um, I mean, I would certainly ask you to put this into a resolution and have it passed next week. So <laughs> it would just make the, the department so much more firm when we are trying to attract somebody. We're not only trying to um, give somebody a job, but we're trying to attract them to our county. And the, the field of public health is very much stressed right now and strained. So um, I think it's important that we are able to tell the new director, um, this is a growing department. Uh, this is somebody and we need somebody that knows how to grow a department. So, but if we're not going to grow, then we don't need to look for that kind of person. So, um, so that, that's my thought. Now, are there any questions about our ARPA request? I have nothing. Ann or Jay? No specific questions, but just uh, you know, comment that uh, I would agree with you. You're from the Board of Health, uh, very strong uh, applicants that we've had on there and uh, appreciate uh, all the time and, and energy you put in uh, over the last three, year term over the last year or so and, and just all through the pandemic. And then uh, echo what Supervisor Pato's comments related to uh, Samantha moving on and, and wish you the best of luck. Uh, so uh, the challenge I have, maybe the comment I have, is that we are talking about operations and, and, and county functions related to operations, and the ARPA funds are only going to be short term. So uh, we wouldn't be doing a very good service if we didn't look possibly further than 2026 when the ARPA funds expire uh, to make sure that we have funding in. It's hard to have support. Uh, because we are elected positions, but at least have uh, a plan to fund it past 2026. So I would need that in place before I would uh, you know, approve any any increase in the budget. If I might, I have several questions and some comments to share. All right. Thank you very much for being here, Samantha. You will be missed and congratulations. Um, go learn all those things, do all that work and come back. Exactly what I said to a young person who was here from Cascade. Yes, go go do those things, but come home. We appreciate you so much. Um, so first of all, I think something that you've not shared that I think the community at a bit larger scale needs to know the increased work that the health department is doing with the sanitarian. So I don't think people are aware that the jobs that our people have been performing uh, when our last director re retired, that there's been an additional job scope change in, in what um, Bailey Avenirius is doing. Maybe the board needs to be updated about that as well. Yeah, um, I guess in general, there's a lot of specifics about the work she's doing. Um, I guess most noticeable, noticeable is the work she's done with the grants to county. I think this will be the first year we've uh, completed that and spent all of our grant funds. So I'm super stoked about that. That's, um, that's the water sampling. That is the water sampling. Um, She's also gotten much more involved in septic and well inspections than we have in previous years. We've revamped our whole uh, septic permit processing um, and created a new application that was approved by the Board of Health in March, I believe. So she has become a lot more involved in the community. Her position has taken on many more hours of work, in my opinion. Um, and I believe that's where our department should be headed, getting more involved in the community than we have been in the past, which is why I was so passionate about our ARPA proposal. I think it would allow us to do that. Um, and then the other point I was going to make um, to Supervisor Wickham's comments is there are other counties in Iowa that are using ARPA funds for public health staff, um, like Lynn and Johnson County. So it's not um, impossible. And I do think that um, having those positions funded until 2026 gives us more than enough time to put that in the budget or seek uh, grant funds with those positions. Right now with two and a half staff, um, about to be three and possibly training new members of the department, we don't have time to look for grants to fund these positions. And I believe in the future we will, which will make us more sustainable. But right now I think we 
we need some funding to sort of get us out of this rut that we're stuck in. So my, my second point then, I would address my colleagues directly, which is that um, I would propose that we commit under the ARPA funds, at least to reserve or to hold at least one year's compensation for new department staff, that we commit to reserving some of that funding so that it's available, whether we want to hire this person or that person, that's going to be the Board of Health's decision ultimately in any event. But if there was money being held in reserve, held back, to address this like Johnson and Lynn County have done. That also, I think, gives the ability for the department to share an interview and recruitment that there's growth opportunity. So we are unfortunately in such a state of flux that knowing specifically what level of staffing you need and what compensation you need is unclear, which isn't likely a good way for us to make that decision. But I do think the idea of reserving or holding a commitment of funding to ARPA to get us through a year or two until they can do their own much more aggressive grants, I think that would be wise and would likely, and that's why I asked them to come today to say, we have a little bit, I think, of a role to play here to help them as they reach this critical point of, of those interview discussions. So. Um, I would invite a comment if you think that's I, helpful. I, I do think that would be helpful. I think holding, knowing what we have would be most important. And so if you could hold back the fun, funds, if you're not ready to assign them specifically, but hold them back so that we know that we are funded for at least, you know, two more positions for the year so that we, we know how to present it to, to our new director. I go? No, go ahead, Jay, sir. Well, probably two things, maybe to, to, to both the group. It's hard to swivel my head so quickly. But uh, um, one, I'd be open to a work session where we actually go over the application and go over the positions. I think that's what I would like. So before I say yes to the funding hold, I would like to have a work session where we really dive into the positions and certainly you know, have uh, Don's input related to those positions, expected salaries, and then certainly the Board of Health if we could get you know, certainly yourself as the leader of the chair, uh, others as well, I think that'd be extremely helpful. Um, the second thing just to, to state uh, is we've had, and the Board of Health has had this power all along. So the county has had the funding, ample funding to service your requests since the first day I sat on this board. It's a matter of priorities. And so, uh, hadn't been necessarily addressed to us and presented to us. And obviously the pandemic has brought, you know, things to the surface that were much more, are much more important now than they were, unfortunately, six years ago. Um, but we have ample funds to fund the Board of Health uh, and have for my entire term. And so the ARPA is, is, is a new opportunity for, for all, uh, for all the communities and all the applicants. Uh, but uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be one of the, the linchpins, but it is certainly an opportunity to, to explore. So currently there are four positions that are budgeted, I believe. That's true. Okay. And so, I mean, I would have a commitment that, there, that I would look for reserved ARPA funding, budget amendments, budget going forward to fund an additional two for certain. So that is where I am, that you're looking for someone who's a department leader of six, okay? Yes, okay. That's where I am. Um, I think that that's important to say that we can't, I, I, talk, I took Dr. Uh, Hendricks' comments very much to heart and was pleased to hear from him that we need to be ready for what's next. We were, were too lean and we need to be <clears throat> more robust, just to even do what we need to do with the, the grants to counties with the water, with the sanitation. There's so many things that we just, we have to be able to do those adequately. We're not staffed to do that. And to bring on the additional people who need to collaborate with our partners. So um, I don't know if either of you wish to also make a commitment going from four to saying that there'll be six and we'll find a way to budget. Once again, I'd like to have a work session on it because I think there's some other parts. So, you know, we state the employee count 
Now, on the Board of Health, we also do contract close to the tune of $300,000 with VNA and others. So there, there are other funds that uh, are being, being administered with the Board of Health. And I think we need to look at that. Um, when you look at uh, you know, Johnson, Lynn, and other, other uh, counties, um, they don't necessarily use the same model that we have. So I think there's, there's other pieces in play. And uh, I would strongly, I would just wanna see what we're trying to plan for and what positions are critical and needed and uh, see if we, well, we can address it at this point. And a lot of that funding to the VNA is passed through grants. They write a grant for our health department. The health department is granted the funds and it's paid out through the claims. It's paid out to the VNA on a reimbursement basis. So um, I'm not, I am not clear as I sit here, how much is operational costs, how much is pass through funding that just simply goes out under various grant programs. So that would also be the purpose, I think, of a robust work session <clears throat> to kind of know that better. Um, but my final comment would be um, something that I am doing. This is this is me. And um, I reached out to Stella and we are looking, she's assisting me in looking for some um, rental space or purchase space in downtown Dubuque for us to have similar to what the state of Iowa is doing, the co-location of Department of Human Services, co-located sharing building space, separate floor, but building space with the County Department of Health and also Brain Health, our MHDS folks. The, the concept that we should have a building that is public health and human services to me rings very true. It sounds like it, I think it's achievable. I think we're we're looking at a space that might be. I raise it for transparency. Um, I mentioned it to Samantha this morning, um, to May last week, to Ann. So just to be aware that I think that's something we could do. Um, it doesn't fix everything. We've talked about that, all the moving puzzle pieces. But um, you know, Samantha or Sandra, if you see a problem with that being um, in the city as compared to out in the western, uh, you know, the western edge of the city. Um, but just to, that, I think that's something we could do to make our public health center and more vibrant. Um, yeah, I just support that idea. I think moving us there would put us closer to our subcontractors, which like Jay said, we need to really consider in these conversations. So I totally agree with having a work session that includes them as well with the Board of Health. Um, and I think that the public health crisis that we've been going through has really showed us how these services intertwine. And so having us more connected, even in conversations with Ann Cameron Williams about public health and brain health and how we can work together better, having us in the same location and the same area for people to access our services while also being close to our subcontractors who provide direct care makes the most sense to me. And I, I think it's a great idea also. Um, I just wanna mention, I noticed another board members on Zoom, Amy Crow Sunleaf. Um, could I invite her to speak if she wants to? Um, Amy Crow Sunleaf, uh, would you like to say anything this morning? Hi, everybody. I just wanted to say that um, each of our board members in, in about November, I believe, picked a county of about equal population size to Dubuque County. So we had Lynn County, Johnson County, Blackhawk County, and I think Scott County. Each of those counties has 50 employees in their health department. And that is not to take away from our partnerships with the VNA or other partnerships we have, but it's just to show how small we are compared to counties of equal size. And so I, I thank you supervisors for considering uh, adding additional staff. I think it's imperative that we, that we do this. Thank you, Amy. Are there any other questions or comments? Would we be able to uh, have a work session June 6th, either the first Monday of June or June 5th, June 5th? I think. You indicated the interviews are June 13th. And Dawn, are you going to be engaged in those interviews as yeah, well? Yeah, June 13th is the interview, so we want to have it done before then. Yeah, we're looking at the week of the 13th or the 20th. For the interviews. So if we can right. get something scheduled before that, I think that would be a fine idea. That would be helpful. Absolutely. June 5th, I think. Yes. Um, we would 
and I'll um, invite the board and as many as possible will come, I'm sure, so. Well, if we could actually set it as a joint meeting with, so that you can also post notice so everyone can come. You don't have to worry about right. quorum. Right, okay. We could post it as a joint meeting with the Board of Health and the Board of Supervisors in work session format, but that way, with possible action. That would be great. And that way you can all be present and we can all then have robust discussion. Okay, right? that would be great. Thank, Thank you. you, Sandra. Thank you, Thank you both Thank very you, much. Samantha. Thank you very much. Uh, next to be a work session, discussion and tentative funding allocations for ARPA external applications. I thought it was noteworthy, um, if I might chair, to say that we received an email from Ed Raber um, indicating that there are three new ARPA funding requests coming from cities in Dubuque County. So obviously Cascade Library was here this morning and I appreciate folks staying for this discussion. And we also uh, have one from the city of Luxembourg and also from the city of Epworth. So there are other communities that are coming forward asking us to look at their needs and they are now the completed applications. Is that right, Ed? So they, Ed, Ed says that they are completed applications um, for, for them to come forward to us. I, see a, a reoccurring theme of needs to assist our other communities. Um, certainly they all have received ARPA funding based on their uh, per capita, <clears throat> but um, probably the news of today's meeting will spur other cities who have issues with um, water, wastewater treatment issues, um, lagoons that are failing, tags from DNR that are greater than just those from Bankston, but other communities are struggling with those same issues. Um, they just, they don't know that they could or should or can still apply for that kind of funding. So I would, again, just to ask my colleagues, we, we should, I believe it would be a smart thing to consider holding some of this funding back to say, we need to, to make decisions, yes, but that there's going to need to be a significant reserve, I think, and we should likely come to what that number might be. So, you know, we're getting to the point where enough, enough uh, decisions have been reached and um, what's left to spend and what might we hold back as a reserve for future needs or future requests that might also have um, great worth and purpose. I understand that uh, we need to have some of the money in reserve. Uh, when we took the applications, we had a deadline on it. I don't know why we did that because we're still taking applications. So the people that went through the process and got it in on time are still waiting for an answer while we're still taking applications. I know a lot of these ideas come up late and they are good ideas. I have. I'm not arguing about that. But at some point we have to say we're done accepting applications because we need to move things forward also. We could also do what Lynn County did, which is to say, these are the allocations we've made at this time and others will be considered at a future date. They don't have to reapply, but there would be opportunity to give an update or check back to see how fundraising is going if that's the appropriate check back, but that it isn't, it isn't as if it needed to be all of the millions to the funds that come in. The city of Dyersville, I think is working on something um, with regard to their food pantry. There's, you know, all of those needs um, are surfacing. So er we are taking action on application that missed the initial deadline. So it, um, it, I understand that. Right. So the question I have is, should we be reserving some so that there's the opportunity to make secondary application or secondary awards as things do come up? We could do that easily. We'll just not give any internal money out because well, that's how you would reserve some, but you have all these internal applications to go through too yet. 
or not even to the internals we need internal application supervisor pot up were presented during their budget sessions that was how those came before us um, when they made a departmental budget presentation department they all of health them. is Pardon? basically an internal organization right what is that the department of health that's an internal organization. As the radios were as well, right? So but yes. there's a lot more internal ones that we haven't gone through yet, is what I'm saying. We haven't made any determinations on something. So you're talking about we haven't discussed them and made a decision right. that we've heard from them, though. Well, we've heard from them. We may yeah. call someone back in and right. have them okay. present again. We're just using different words. I agree. But we're good. We have to hold some money back, but. We also have a lot of applications that we haven't discussed yet. And, and that is why Lynn County, I believe, is saying these are the decisions we have made up until this time, and then they will move forward up until another time. Kind of like as we're getting the money from the government, they're dispersing that based on the decisions that they are making. And they did do many assistance to so, infrastructure for their small communities. Do you want to just not take any action on any of these now then? Is that what you're? No, I didn't say that either. What I'd like I, to see I is some kind you. of, no, no, no. Is there, I think we need to decide if we're going to reserve funding, then the funding that becomes available is a different number. If we're intending to spend it all to get to $19 million, 18.9, then we can do many more things today. But if we're holding back a reserve, then the available amount is reduced. I think we owe it to those that have completed the application to review those, discuss it in public, and make a decision. That's what we said we were going to do. We've moved down that process. Um, it's been bumpy with the board because. Uh, it's been clunky, but we have made awards. We have made progress. We put this funding to work. Um, the last thing we want to do with inflation at where it's at is to hold and reserve funds. That's not going to help anyone. Um, you know, in 2026 is the deadline. So there is a hard deadline by the federal government in terms of these, these funds. So I think we owe it to those that have completed these applications to give them answers and to uh you know and, and, and if that answer is we don't know that's at least an answer but i would like it to be a little more definitive and so i would would go through the process where we have you know city of banks and city of rexerville rickardsville and silt and a variety of the other ones that are still hanging out there is to to make uh funding decisions and we have we have funds we have, there's no need to put any in reserve they're already in reserve they're already sitting there they're not allocated, they're not appropriated. So just so citizens understand, my position and what funding can happen is based on this for me, and this is personal, that we need to hold some funding in reserve and that we need to have the flexibility of these grants funds for pandemic rescue relief, okay? So I value everyone's time in coming forward but I am likely going to be no on things because it is the balancing of what's coming, what's still coming in, what's still emerging. I will be at the Board of Health meeting as the liaison on Wednesday night, and I have heard rumored that there's going to be a funding item on that agenda that a critical agency needs additional funding. Remember, the pandemic isn't over. We're enjoying the spring summer recess. But that isn't what we're seeing nationally. So what is that going to mean for our health department? So where are those, if, if this is all that the Biden administration expects us to do, are we expected to weather the, the third leg of a pandemic with this funding? I'm going to be cautious and hold back to wait and see. So folks that I probably have supported and have indicated that I am supporting will be surprised that those things shift as we make decisions here and establish various priorities that I'm more inclined to not give money to folks. I don't have an issue with keeping some money back because there, there probably will be some good ideas that come up next year and we'd have till 26. 
I'm not saying $5 million or whatever, but you know, we hold back a couple million or whatever. Now we have some areas that we got, we can make movement on if there is a, you know, this good idea. If uh, that doesn't happen, well, the money would be, I guess, spent other ways. But I'm about, I want to get through these external applications that we have now. Anything that comes in, well, that's going to have to wait after this. It's going to have to wait until we're done with what we have. Will you be considering applications from the small communities equally? For instance, Luxembourg and Epworth, their requests that could come before us. I, I wasn't think aware those be, were done. I believe I had said to have them present next week. So possible. Should we be should we be looking at anything in terms of equity equity similar issues? The libraries are all seated right here directly before us. Good morning, Joyce. Good morning. I mean, it, and that's the way government works at the county level. You're here, and I am four feet away from you, giving you good news or bad news, and um, so that's just how that county government works. But are we going to treat equitable items evenly or equitably? Are we also going to look at requests from smaller communities for their number one need equally. Luxembourg doesn't necessarily need something to do with um, water sewer, but they have an infrastructure need all the same, which is uh, paving in their commercial park. How do we treat those? We haven't heard their presentation yet, so. I... But I'm saying, are we gonna treat those things similar or are they just gonna be decided as they come in based on kind of our feeling about it. Well, we can't discuss it because we haven't heard the presentation. So we know they're coming next week. I'm talking the ones that we have moved forward on this list for the externals. I understand what you're saying, Harley, but are you also understanding that for me, it really is the funds are more limited. And so well, equity- Obviously remains. the funds are gonna be limited because right. we're taking more applications and we were at 60 million before all these other applications came in. So realistically, we're probably at 66 million, although several of them have reduced their ask. It's down below 60 now, but you have one third of the funding. So two thirds of the people aren't gonna get funding or they're gonna be getting substantially less than what they asked for. I wish the government had given us 60 million that everybody could get what they asked for, but that's not the case. Could we talk about the libraries? We've heard from two libraries mm -hmm. with very similar designs, very similar costs. And I'm wondering how can we be fair to the full community fund them both? Is that what we intend to do? I have not an issue with either one of the libraries. Uh, we funded several other organizations for different amounts. Uh, everybody's situation is different. We have an application process. We've, we've asked for community, both public and private, nonprofit, private requests. And I don't think it's up to us to interpret their requests. It's to take them at face value. So what they're asking for is what we should review. Um, yeah, it's not a fair and equitable, exact, perfect process. It's not each one of the communities get pro rata for, pro, for their population funding. That's just not how we set that up. Um, so we have to look at the applications and, and review those. We really can't afford to do a $2.9 million request to Farley and a million dollar request to Cascade. Well, words of Ford. So um, two things, uh, tax and save is a bad policy that, that doesn't help your citizens and your tax base. You need to put the money that you've collected for taxes, both on the federal and the local level to work or don't collect it or give it back. To save it, particularly now in inflation, is not helpful. 
not to, you know, certainly on the federal side, the grant, yes, that should go to zero by 2026. Related to our other fund balances, which certainly you could ask the budget director for her opinion, are at the highest ever. We just had a budget amendment. I don't know if any of you saw the fund balance amount, 50 million. That's what we have in reserve. Various categories, not apples to apples, but it's probably the largest it's been in my term. So the question of afford, I don't think that's the right word. It's a priority. And we need to hear from the community what their priorities are. And then we elected officials as a Republic make those decisions. We can afford each one of these requests that are in front of us. We can't afford all of them. Um, and we've made some compromises, but that's what we have to do. We have to make these decisions. And the longer we wait, uh, the more complex uh, the decisions may get. So I would agree, maybe the word afford is, is wrong. It apparently hits a different chord with you than what I am intending it to say. When I look at how I will vote for the allocation of the federal rescue dollars, okay? This is not our fund balance dollars. These are the federal dollars. I think there needs to be fairness as we address, certainly the, the obvious example is libraries. There should be fairness. I also don't know that we've had this meeting with stakeholders that we had talked about having um, previously, and maybe that would benefit by having Cascade and Farling be in the room together. Um, tomorrow is when your library trustees are meeting at Holy Cross tomorrow evening at 530. So maybe folks from Holy Cross will be present to address the board of trustees for the library district. But so that, you know, to, to get off center and to move beyond philosophy here to a direct application, how can we be fair to citizens asking us to assist them in building new libraries critical to both communities? I guess I would look at it as Farley had put in their application for the library community center. And they had asked for uh, $3 million or better. 80% of the funding. Pardon? 80% of the funding. We had discussed that. And then we got Cascade's application. So I, I understand you're saying apples to apples, but it's really not because Farley had their application in, but they asked for and we had discussion on it and there was general consensus to move it forward before Cascade's application even came in. Cascade asked for a million. They have the city wants to bond for a million and they're looking at a million for donations. I think that's a great deal. Could we ask Farley to use that same, that same avenue? We're a million dollar to kick off a tremendous fundraising gift they may have to bond and they also need to do their own fundraising. To me, that would be fair to say that that's a similar process to do that. But Farley made it clear, situations are different. Farley has bonded for their sewers and they bonded, they're basically stretched right now. That's why they're asking for the money for the library, all the money, because they can't get any more. Obviously, Cascade's in a little better financial situation. You might be in a better financial situation than me. Does that mean we're the same? Not really. No, everybody's situation is different. We have to weigh the situation inside on the funding. My thoughts. Generally, I generally would concur. I mean, I think, you know, as I stated, and I won't say it a third time, but I'll say it a second time, we have applications in. Um, and applications that were in under the original deadline, I'd like to get to those and make decisions. And I'm staring at the screen right now. And so, you know, they're in front of me. And That's so what I'd like to talk about is we keep adding to the list of requests. And it's okay to have another application in. It's okay to, you know, have public input, but that doesn't mean they should necessarily dampen out the other requests that are here. I, I think we just have to review those requests and make decisions. That's what we asked for. Right. That's what we spent months talking about. I was a proponent of prioritizing and categorizing. And we said, no, as a board, we're gonna move forward and just do open applications. That's what we have. We need to review them and make those decisions. 
And, you know, we still owe decisions to city of banks and city of records fail to sales and, and a series of other ones. And so, so the record is clear. Farley's application was late. It did not come to us in yes. the initial application. Clear. Yes, we've, we've right. done that with many of them. A, a few, a few, not many. So I just think that needs to be said. So Field of Dreams is the same way. So yes, I mean, the biggest one and probably the most highest profile was the Field of Dreams. That also was not under the, the guidelines that we had originally published. And that was a unanimous vote. And I'm very proud that we were able to fund that. The Field so, of Dreams is something that I worked on for more than a year. I think we're all very familiar with it. They right. just didn't follow the application process. I think we agree with that. They didn't have the deadline. I'm fine with that. And all of us knew that. Just sedated that. That's 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 how I open this conversation. Um, and so, but I think we need to go back to the the applications we have, and there is a finite number, and make those decisions. If we wait, <laughs> you're going to be right back to those decisions. They're still going to go. Hey, what about my application? We owe it to the public to follow our process and give answers. Maybe difficult, and some of them have been. Modifications to the request, some have been zero. That's that's why we get paid the big bucks up here. You bet. So the citizens of Cascade are here. Supervisor Wickham, what might you propose for their funding? I, I will propose that in the few weeks we will get, well, your city of Farley, a uh, few, few city of Cascades back there. Um, we will get to your application like we have. So we've heard presentations and then two or three weeks later, we have deliberation. That's what we've been doing for the last couple months. This is not a new process, but we keep tripping on it every week. So Supervisor Potoff, I, I agree with you that we need to go over these applications and make decisions. We did Farley the same day. Pardon? We did Farley the same day they were here. The same day that Farley presented, we had deliberation about that dollar amount. No, no decisions have been made no related decision. to Farley. So, you know, we, we had so conversation here with- library, We did it that way. And what we're saying now is we're not going to have discussion about Cascades library request. I think we, we just have had for the last half hour or so with Cascade and all- I think there was general consensus to move it forward. For a million dollars? Well, it's to move it forward. I don't- know that it was at the million i didn't hear that but the general theme was that there was support for the cascade library well i i am in favor of a million dollars for the cascade city library and then i would also be in favor of a million dollars for the farley city library to me that seems fair and equitable well we can move the as far as i'm concerned we can move the cascade library forward with the hold do we have consensus? For... Do we have consensus for a million dollars for the Cascade Library? Push, pushing hard for that number here. Um, I think we've had consensus to move it forward, and that's what we've done with others. Um, I am not objectionable to a million dollars, um, and uh, I've been pretty easy on almost all the applications. And I, I, the good news is, we're really getting to some really good infrastructure and asset projects, which I was hoping we would start with. Um, many of the other social services ones were good. Don't get me wrong. But uh, if we can use these dollars and invest them in, in hard assets, they'll be here, uh, as we stated, for, for decades to come. So, so I think uh, the Cascade Project and the Farley Project related libraries are, are great. I'm very, very excited to, to deliberate and eventually come up with a number for those. That said, I would like to get to the other ones that had their application in on September 15th. And you probably would understand that that's a fairness thing, too. You know, so there are other communities that that got it in the September 15th, and I'm sure you're not gonna try to, you know, knock them off um, and uh, would want them to have their decision made. And that's what I would encourage the board to do. Okay, so we would move the Cascade Library forward with tentative funding at a million with further discussion to be had. I'm comfortable with that. Um, yes, I'm comfortable with that and would like to get to those other applicants that are still waiting as well. And we will move to that. You good with that, Ed? Okay. Thank the you. other thing I'd like to see is um, kind of a reverse spreadsheet. Like if this is our total dollar we're gonna spend, how much do we have to spend between the remaining requests? Um, not much, probably.
Do you know what I'm saying yet? Get there. Zed Raver. On at the top of the spreadsheet. At the top of the spreadsheet. So this uh, table here, uh, I have, I've tried to have it set up to give you a, a, an active uh, list of what's going on. On the left, I've sort of shifted that so it identifies the number of projects that you have voted to provide some ARPA funds to. In the total request column, uh, that, those numbers occasionally will change as either an application has withdrawn their request or you have chosen to deny them. Uh, just for uh, the, the sake of keeping track of what's active, I, I delete those out of the total requests. Um, the next column shows the amount that you have allocated in ARPA funds to both external and internal projects uh, by category. And that sums up uh, coming into today at uh, 8,092,000 and some numbers I can't quite read from here. At the very top of this worksheet in row one is uh, the total ARPA allocation of 18,901,522. And summing all of you, the, the projects that you have funded so far is 8,092,000. So um, Supervisor McDonough, in, in, in looking at that, is there some, uh, I'm very happy to, to help you conceptualize this information in a different way or an additional way. Um, if, if there's something with that that you're, you're looking for, I'm happy to, to do that. I'm not sure I understood exactly what you were saying. My math is the same. So I'm doing it more like this. My math is the same. Um, when I add in the Farley Library and the Cascade Library, I would add it. That's another um, $4 million. Broadband is $5.5 .5 million. I, and I, I, these are. I understand you right. can't do that, but right. that's where my checklist is. Correct. My scratches. Correct. And then we look at Rickardsville, which is half a million dollars. You, you start to see where the bites are big, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of wiggle room for concessions. And you can see that the eighteen million dollars is uh, gone. If you wish to reserve anything for down the road future issues, so some of the funding requests before us right now that we are anxious to get back to. Um, sadly, are, are for me likely to be zeros or very small and modest because there's no other way to do it. There are other avenues. Uh, the IT uh, ask for 5.5 .5 million is uh, for the middle mile. Mm -hmm. I believe we could uh, talk to the entities like Microsoft, whoever, and give them the opportunity to put conduit in while we redo the road with the caveat that we would get one strand in the conduit. Chances are that would be very cheap on the county's part and we would still get our fiber. Nathan's working um, rapidly and getting good results from lots of folks. So I'm sure his request will change. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm certainly. saying it would go from 5 million to basically nothing if one of these other entities would say, we'll lay the fiber or lay the conduit, you can have your strand inside. You don't spend anything. That's an update he's gonna bring back. We've asked him right. to do a bunch of footwork and I know he's doing it. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, Last week, I stated I, I need to hear from the public and the stakeholders that that fiber project is is viable, um, and uh, I believe Nathan is is working on that. But uh, what we have heard, and we do need to make decisions on, is City of Bankston, City of Rickardsville. We go back to them. You know, they're they're in our backyard. They put the applications in. We need we. That's where I would like our conversations to go. So would you like to address records? Or, or I would like the chair first? to maybe follow the same process he has in the past. He's done a wonderful job to try to guide us through. Here's the application. What do we feel and think? We will we can move forward. We would start where we left off. Uh, 
Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque Equitable Employment Path plays uh, was held. I uh, believe there was discussion that there was support, but uh, substantially less than 600,000. Discussion. Could you repeat the, the application you're doing? The auditor's trying to grab it real quick here. Uh, for 600,000 for equitable employment pathways. Uh, I recall we had discussion on it, discussion on it, and there was general support, but not at the $600,000 level. My support was a little less strong. Uh, we funded a lot from the community foundation. They've, they've done good work, um, but, but maybe if dollars are scarce, uh, this is a project we could pass on at this point and see if they could find additional funding um, through their pool of funding, which is deep. I would tend to agree with you on that. Supervisor Wickham, uh, Northeast Iowa Workforce Development Board just put two new employees at Iowa Works at NICC. Uh, I think we have duplication of efforts here, uh, trying to get employees or more people to accept jobs. So I, I guess I, I think that at this time I would probably take a pass on this also just because of the shortage of funds and it is a duplication of services. It's the only organization working directly with refugees. So um, this would be the funding to help refugees from Afghanistan, from the Ukraine, from Guatemala, from Nicaragua. They are, they are our new neighbors and they are also, um, their kiddos are in our schools and um, our employers need to hire them and they know that. One of the parts of this application was that to develop a toolkit for worker, for, excuse me, employers to know a one-stop provision. How do you, what steps do you take for bilingual education? What steps do you take for all of your forms being translated? What, how do you operate um, under the, the various refugee employment statuses? So that was unique to this. And that's why I continue to move that forward because it's not, it's not a duplication. There are folks coming to this. And since we had this last before us, I know that um, NICC has begun to work with some of the VIATs and the immigration attorneys to better understand about um, GED programs in Spanish. So there's more collaboration happening that's the result of these applications coming forward. That makes sense that there's progress. This isn't static. Everyone is waiting for us, but the people aren't waiting for us. People are moving forward, making change, getting progress, collaborating, raising ideas. So it isn't as if this is, the community is not waiting for us to do this. I would say 98% of the grants are moving forward to do the work that they're requesting that we do, that we help them with. I guess they are moving forward without our funds. They are able to handle it. Well, I'm I'm not going to be able to persuade you either. Wise, so I hear I can count. There's two no move forwards. So if someone wants to make a motion to deny that, I will vote no. But you may do that. Would you? Are, are, some... are you ready, or would you want to? If you're ready for that decision, I don't, I don't know if we want to still have more discussion or not. I was just asking you on discussion if you'd be interested in. I, I think what, you know, what their own mission, Community Foundation Greater Dubuque, is not a direct service provider. Okay. And they do very good in leadership, administration, collaboration roles. I think I've had enough of that. I mean, it's, they've done good. You know, I, I, I'd like to get the funds to directly to the programs. And, uh, this is one where I think maybe we can hold. I agree. I'm, I'm comfortable making a decision today if, if the board wants to do that. If you're ready, Supervisor Potoff. What does hold mean? I'd say hold. No, I'm making a decision. 
I heard you said ask for motion. I'm asking Sergeant Potter if he wants more discussion. So on our spreadsheet, we typically put down either deny or approve. Um, yeah. So if we were to introduce a new word, just let us know and we can. No, I'm, I'm, I'm still having discussion. I just want to know if they're done. I was discussion. asking if you'd be looking at maybe like a hundred thousand to coordinate. I don't know what that gets them. They haven't asked for it. They haven't. They haven't dialed back their application like other programs have. So I'm assuming six hundred thousand is what their their request is. And for for me at this point, it, I would be passing, or that would be a denial when we're ready to make those decisions. That's where I'm at right now. But we, but Supervisor Wickham, obviously we have dialed back many of the requests people have made. We. Green Energy I, I, asked for two hundred and fifty thousand. I agree. I'm not. 40. I'm not saying. So right. we can dial back the Community Foundation's request without them asking us to do that. Absolutely, right? and okay. go for it. I just gave you my opinion. Okay, so you know where I'm at. Just like you said five minutes ago, where you were at. Okay, so if someone you know feels there's a number, uh, feel free to propose that. Uh, my number is zero for this program. I think we do need to have some reach into the uh, Guatemalan community and our uh, refugee community um, with some collaboration. And the Community Foundation does have the ability to get all the players at the table to try to help. I would make the motion to move forward at 100,000. Second that. Have a motion and a second to move the Community Foundation of Greater Dubuque forward at funding at 100,000. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Unanimous. Next, we have the Community Solutions of Eastern Iowa, coordinated yep. entry homeless hotline and expanded homeless housing options. There was an email from Kelly and uh, Dightmy over the weekend. Did everyone get that and see that? I did. Yes, I have to back to it. Um, it's Saturday, May 14th at 518. Did you want to take a minute just to read it? I mean, I can read it into the record, I guess. It was sent to us separately. Large amount of emails over the weekend. I can't remember what I all read. So May Saturday at 518. Title is CSC. Well, it's for the thirty-five thousand a year for three years. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. We have funded um, CSCI in the past under the purchase of services contract, and they had a purchase of services request before us. And then when we made them re reapply in the ARPA portal, they asked for a, a bigger award because they're doing so many more things. Right. So now they're back saying that, you know, I'm sure they heard the discussion uh, that wasn't, you know, robust about being grant large grant funding there. And they're saying, please don't forget that we do need the thirty five thousand dollars a year commitment, which we've been making to them. I wouldn't have an issue with that. You know, the coordinated entry program has been working very well. So. They had reduced it from, I believe, 340 down to 218, and now they're down to 105. 105 over three years. So, make a motion to approve $105,000 to CSCI for the uh, coordinated entry hotline. I'll, I'll second with discussion. Yep. Uh, does your motion just for one year and that amount, or is it for three years and actually? It's for the three years as set for, so $35,000 a year. Okay. We've been putting them in, I think, at the full amount, and the contracts are going to spell that out. Okay, thank you. Motion still good? Yeah. I have a motion and a second to move uh, Community Solutions of Eastern Iowa forward at 105000 which comes down to 35000 a year for three years. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Next, we have the Dubuque County Historical Society uh, Tourism Enhancement Project. 
$1,112,384. I'd like to significantly fund this. And so I'm asking that it move forward so that it move on again to start to see what funding is left. I'm not gonna fund it right now at a million dollars. And I don't know that half of that helps them. I mean, becomes this is one where there's diminishing returns. The million dollar request is to do a bang up exhibit that is the Dubuque, city of Dubuque, awesomeness version to balance Field of Dreams, right? Bookend a three day trip to somebody here who might come see Field of Dreams. But you can reduce the amount to such, to such a level that it isn't helpful. She, there's not likely the, that they can do awesomeness with $100,000, right? So I'd like to keep this alive very much. It's important to me. As I've said, and the county's probably tired of hearing it, it's one of my granddaughter's very favorite things to do in the whole world is to go to the National Mississippi River Museum. I to be five. Also had a lot to do with the uh, ham house, I believe. It's a multifaceted application. Right. So well, the ham house is a city entity, isn't it? It's owned by the, the county. It's the historical society owns the ham house. So historical. I wasn't sure how that. It's actually ours. It's the board of supervisors through the Dubuque County Historical Society. I mean, there was, it, I think it's kind of our responsibility. I Not bet, like I the guess fair, I just but. Never really knew who no, I don't, technically I don't was in control. think it's part of the government, but you could be wrong on that. So, so maybe we need to bring maybe we need to bring the, bring them back, so we have some some clarity on the dollar amount. And it's a big dollar amount, and I'm I'm, I'm very supportive of the, what they do. Uh, uh, well, maybe we could ask the basic question: Is this, if the county owns the do we house, want to which do I don't that? believe they do? I don't think we want to stop each application to have people call be on the call as they're out in the. I think that's. That's not the way I think we'll just set it up for another work session. Uh, Good idea. So that'll stay and move forward, put it down for another work session. Ed, uh, I don't know what the six looks like, if, if possible. Uh, I guess before I forget, the uh, week of June 13th, I'm going to be out of town. I will zoom in on Monday, but so I want to keep June 13th as small of agenda as possible too so either that or the 20th would it be harley can you remind me what date do you need a small agenda Pardon? what date do you need a small agenda uh, june, june 13th i would be out of town okay thank you <sighs> yep there is some clerk in the chat video sam else you were right supervisor potoff Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Would the sixth work for you, Aaron, to do uh, another work session regarding that? You said yes. Yes, exclamation. That was about the work session, Kevin. Texting the public. There you go. All right. Okay, we'll move forward. Dubuque Main Street, en enhancing economic viability of downtown Dubuque's building inventory through mixed uses. It was 400,000 discussion. My general recalling of this program is, is, is similar to what the state just did. And I believe Cascade was, sorry, Cascade was <laughs> awarded and Farley was awarded um, for uh, downtown projects for a, a residential and, and commercial on the lower levels. And that's the focus for this as well. So um, uh, very pleased that the governor was awarded uh, two, if not three in our county here. Um, this would be our opportunity to do it in Dubuque. Um, I know there's some changes going through right now with the Duke Main Street, but uh, I'm generally supportive, uh, but the dollar amount is, is significant. And, and ultimately, the funds will pour through into private businesses. So that's the other 
other component that makes it a little more clunky. This is a unique upper program in that Main Street's going to be involved with the, they're going to um, help the developer get funding. So this is one piece of the funding, but the projects are going to be greater. As I recall, the projects will be greater than any money we give. So Absolutely. being in engaged in this work, I think is important, but I don't think we're the only funder to make this happen. There's I would hope that the city would be involved at at least the same amount, if not more. But Dave, what was this? I would be open to that. That would be a good offer. We could ask Main Street if that's uh, if they've requested that. And it was over a series of years as well. It's over three years, was it? Hundred thousand or hundred twenty-five thousand a year, hundred thirty thousand a year. Is that what it was? Four years, right? Well, I would make a motion that we um, award one hundred thirty thousand dollars. And if there's, my motion is that we award one hundred thirty thousand dollars. Total. Yeah, it can come back as purchase of services if they really get something going good. I'll, I'll second that with discussion. Go ahead. Um, so your, your, your motion is for the Dubuque Main Street program, uh, for a hundred thousand dollars, 130,000, 130,000. And you were, your reference for that number, any significance that I should be aware of, or. I think it's, it's a robust first year of development. Basically a third of their ask. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm open to a different number. No, no, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. This was asking for clarity. The motion is good. The motion has no second yet. I second it. You second okay. it with Thank discussion. You. you have a motion and a second to approve Dubuque Main Street for $130,000. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Carries. Next, we have the city of Farley. The Farley Library ask is 3438596 That was moved forward. We were going to have some conversation with stakeholders, and I we were waiting. I think for Auditor Gigato, you were going to meet with some folks during a. You are on a board for the libraries, right? I'm a member of the library agency. They did have a meeting last week. I was unable to attend due to a okay. previous engagement. But it was. I think those folks that we were trying to get together to talk about the issues that are raised in this. Do you have something special, um, Ed? One moment, can I share? Yes, you? go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I'm on that same thought as Supervisor McDonough. So one of the outstanding issues that I feel we can overcome, but I don't know the knowledge yet, is how can we make uh, library funding uh, contingent that this is open to the public? And so, Amanda, I'm looking at you. I don't know if we have any progress or any input on that, but that's specifically what I'm interested in resolving. And I, so... I did do some... Checking into that. Okay, I'm listening. Libraries are open to the public. But, along with the usage of their books and materials. So that right. might have a secondary component. The only caveat would be checking items out. You would have to belong to that district. But otherwise, the library, computers, everything is open. Anybody can go there and use it. But to check out, you'd have to, to check out a book or something, you'd have to belong to that district. Or check out a hot spot. That's existing. That's the existing rule. I don't know how to call it law or maybe it is, but that's the existing state of play. Is that correct? Right. So what I'm asking is how do we amend that and how do we allow for these federal funds to, when they go to libraries, that any person that's in the United States would have access to those materials and that site. That's what I'm asking. I don't know if anyone here can help me with that, but that's my request. Amanda, do you have insights to that? I would be very interested in hearing from you, but the, the chair at your meeting to no, run. I, definitely. Uh, library services are, you're correct. It is the current mode of operation that um, individuals get library services when their communities 
contract for that service. So that's the case statewide. Um, so we have a number of agreements that I know I've already shared with you um, about each of those. I am not, I, I'm not sure how to get from where we are to anyone in the US being able to check out our materials. Um, we, uh, as was mentioned, had our agency meeting last week that Melissa was uh, able to join us and one of your board members also was able to join us. And we invited um, the director of the other kind of comparable library district in the state. Uh, Trisha Kane is the director of the state library, or not the state library, the Scott County Library District. And we discussed how their system works, uh, how their funding works, uh, especially relative to ours. And then we four library directors, so uh, Melissa, myself, Nick Rossman at Carnegie Stout, and Shirley uh, Bonahara at Dyersville. We spent two hours on that call, you know, trying to figure out what the best solution is for providing access in Dubuque County. And um, at this point, every community is invited to join the agency uh, every year. Every year they get a letter asking them, you know, offering our services, offering to come to their uh, meetings to discuss the benefits of joining the agency. And uh, every year, you know, we will get a question or two from an individual community, but they decline to take action on our offer. And uh, I know that this is still talking very within Dubuque County, um, but I know that's uh, close to all of our hearts here. Um, I am not sure of a library, and I'm sure I, I'm sure I'm. Uh, just not as well informed as I could be. I don't know of libraries that are open to every single person in the nation um, because they are often municipal or county or regional but services. They are open to anybody. Yes, anyone could walk in, anyone. So there are some libraries that require you to have a card, but they'll give you a guest card if you're not from the area or you don't have one, you know, to use the computers, to attend a program. Uh, there are plenty of other places where things are much more restricted than they are here in Dubuque County. Anyone can come in and use our computer. We don't require them to um, have a card. We open our program registration up. We don't make you verify that you are a taxpaying member of our district before you're eligible to come to our programs. Um, the state of Iowa has really broad programs like open access which is why uh, someone who lives in Cascade can come to one of my branches and use our materials and check them out because that's a state, that's a state program. But in order to be a participant in that program, you have to have that local, you have to, you have to get over that local barrier of access to library services. Um, are, there any, are there any smaller towns that belong to you that, well, that would be part of your district that don't pay? No. So, uh, in Dubuque County, you either, uh, well, you're Dyersville, Dubuque, or Cascade, and you have a municipal library, or you're one of the five, six members of the library district, or you have no library service. Those no, are referring. Oh, and then there's the agency. Leases. Yeah. And then there are four Bernard members of the not, agency. You know, Bernard is not. Right. Correct. Bernard does not. So the four members of the agency are Bankston, Centralia, Luxembourg, and Rickardsville. So their communities pay to the agency, and that funding is distributed among our four libraries. And that is what provides service to each of those communities. They contract for service. So, so question. So question. Oh, Balltown. I'm sorry, not Bankston. So Balltown. what you're referring to is the current state of play. And, and you know is that ruled by state law, by an association, by just a contract. What, so tell me how serious it's is A little this. bit of each of those, so I would say. If, if it, so my request would be then, if we can start to dive into that, if there is state code, it's a little more challenging, I'd like to see that. So you know, we don't break any state codes. If it's an agreement related to an association, I'd like to see that as well. And then any other contracts, I'd like to see, I haven't seen any of those. And 
I would be willing to help you overcome this so that we can provide the funding. I know I provided Ann with a couple of code uh, references. Okay. I believe uh, 336.13 refers specifically to library districts, and that um, has to do with funding for library districts. It does not get so far into um, the municipal uh, libraries because those are established in their own municipal codes. Um, so 336.13 does talk about how um, members of a library district uh, bear costs proportional, proportionally uh, for funding that. Okay. Um, Maybe we can have that or you forward it to all members of the Board of Supervisors. That would help me. I'm, I'm trying to solve yeah. this. And so I think that would be helpful for me. Yes. The second piece would be to look at is, uh, you know, if it's maybe I'm jumping to the conclusion, if it's just funding, that also can be overcome. So for as an example, Limestones, Bluffs, RCND, we have the Makokota River Watershed Authority. We just recently agreed to pay for other cities uh, involvement in that management authority. And so there, you know, the county has that ability. We are overarching amongst all property tax payers and citizens um, in that we collect funds from all 21 cities. Uh, and uh, we also unincorporated areas as well. And so I'm not, I just wanna understand what are these barriers that uh, seem to be in front of people. Um, and I'd like to tear those down using federal money. So, so that everyone can have access to these wonderful libraries that we're talking about. This is where I said that it creates an unraveling. If the Board of Supervisors paid the access fee per capita to join the library district for the 1,200 people who currently are not able to check out materials from anybody, Bernard, Zwingo, Bankston, you can probably help me fill in the rest, Sageville, um, if we did that, then Brian Myers from Holy Cross might be tempted to say, well, I'm not going to tax my folks $36 per capita. And I actually have had kind of a, a, I think it was a joking call, but maybe not, from Dyersville saying, hey, take over our library, pay for our people, because we're taxing people at $115 per capita. Maybe the city of Cascade would say, we're out. We don't need to provide a library. If the county is going to provide a library, then that per capita tax that you have, it, it, it destabilizes things because then who's not going to want to pay the per capita tax? So, and the other thing that I think to provide greater resource and greater access, Amanda's doing an amazing job. Um, there's new programming that you're rolling out on a trial basis to get kiddos library cards so they can check materials out, even though they might be from a city that doesn't belong. So in, as the city of Cascade says, trying to broaden, we all realize it doesn't work very well. And how can we broaden it to provide access to the library for more citizens? Do we want to hear from Lisa? Go ahead, Lisa. Yes. I was in Scott County before and these kinds of conversations occurred um, since I've only been here up in Dubuque County about six weeks. I'd certainly volunteer. Um, you know, it's kind of a different perspective sometimes as a city administrator to be able to try and dive into that a little bit on behalf of, you know, all of our libraries. We're not here to try and ask for you to fund other libraries less. But the reality is, is that we all have to think differently. And I think we do have to understand, are these state regulated? Um, I'm sure that the funding mechanism is like the levying part of it is probably at the state level, but we can look at what opportunities we have to sort of break those barriers because it is a different, nobody had ARPA funding two years ago. And so it is a little bit unique. My guess is you probably won't be able to say anybody in the country, even though it's federal money, but I think at a minimum, as you represent the county, that that would at least from my perspective be a realistic goal is how can we open it up to everyone in Dubuque County. And all libraries, as they've said, it's terminology, but people could come anywhere to use it, but it would probably be less practical to have someone buzzing through town and grab a book and then have a difficult way of getting it back to us. 
which is partly why it becomes regional more so than national. But I'd certainly, if the board wants more information, I would also volunteer some time to try and understand that. And then when we come back to have a further conversation about the libraries to so see what I can present. If the county was going to provide access to check out for all citizens and to keep the library system stable, we would have to collect the tax for everyone, but that means we would have to levy the tax. So our levy rate would go up and then we would reach out and fund libraries. It would take a dramatic difference. That would be my ideal situation is that every child everywhere is gonna check out a hotspot and their favorite book from a county library. And the agency in the district doesn't matter so much, but that's going to make our county tax levy increase. Right, I don't believe so. So I, I would, one wouldn't support that. And I, I think we have ample funds to avoid what you're describing. So I would, I'm just not going down the conversation of changing our levy uh, in this discussion. So I'm, I'm out at that point. That's so I, I think we have, we have ample funds that we don't need to discuss uh, levy changes. I propose we move the library discussion forward and have some kind of a stakeholder work session. I would agree. I think that's that's exactly what we need is uh, some of those uh, questions that I that I asked and other supervisors asked, uh, and then have a work session on how to resolve them. And we can also get you the 2080 that created the library agency, yeah. um, because there is a little bit of unraveling if we start to try to cover as a county those 1,200 people, and it, I think it lays it out pretty well in that document. So. I have a motion and a second to hold the library for further discussion. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Well, we didn't have a motion on it, but. Well, we did. All right. All right. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was with you either way. So that'll move forward. Next is Four Mounds Foundation Community Access Engagement on Four Mounds, 500,000. Uh, there been any progress made on reaching out? Thank you for coming. It's going to take some a lot of time. <laughs> you. Appreciate your involvement. Thanks for coming. And your patience. <laughs> Ed? Uh, yes, there has. Last week, I worked with the staff at Four Mounds and um, Thank you. I just sent it here. This is my error. This this came to me at the end of the, the day on Friday, and I was, uh, as you noticed, shooting you uh, a variety of other emails. And uh, my intention was to send you this one. I will in just a few minutes. Um, but the response that I, I got back from Four Mounds was that the city of Dubuque has not, um, which owns the property, has not directly um, placed any uh, dollars into the project that they applied for. They provided me a list um, through the city of Dubuque of some other resources that the city of Dubuque has invested in the last year, uh, one to two years since 2021 into their campus. Uh, that includes a repaving their road project. They did some uh, environmental restoration and a parking lot thing for some erosion control in the area and um, and in, including some of their own tax dollars. So that is the response that I was able to get from working with the staff there. So in as much as that satisfies your request, that's, um, you'll can adjudicate. I understood you were gonna reach out to the city. I, I did that. I had conversations with Marie Ware, um, who's the park and recs uh, director who has some oversight to this. So um, um, what I asked Marie where to do, and that's what she did, is she forwarded this information to the applicant, which is four mounds, and then uh, that came to me on Friday. So the request that's before us right now, I think, is for a bathroom facility. And what matching would the, would the city likely do with us on that project? They, they do not have anything in their 
uh, in this year's budget, um, that would be up to the city council next year for that. So they, they, um, the information that they have available for that classroom and uh, bathroom facility is, is this, so. Thank you, Ed. Um, yes, I would be uh, more inclined to uh, deny this position Petition. Yes, we don't. We haven't come to the city and asked them to build uh, a building at Swiss Valley Park. Although a lot of city people use that, I guess I just at this point I don't see moving it forward any further. My colleagues. I like Four Mounds, what they do. And, uh, you know, so their programs I think are good and the, the historic vantage point I, I really like, but, you know, there is some some questions related to this and, you know, it is uh, number DB Lions. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a city very closely associated to the city and them being reluctant to provide funding would be a leading indicator. Um, I would be open if they would come back and they would be looking for a, a, a modified amount, but that might not be possible because they were looking for scale. They were looking for a meeting room and bathrooms for group gatherings. So killing it down probably wouldn't uh, accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. But if my colleagues were interested in hearing from once again, uh, and, and Four Mounds would be open to that. That's my, that's as far as I'm willing to go today. But I wouldn't uh, push back too hard if my colleagues were looking to deny it today as well. I am a big fan of Four Mounds also. I mean, they do great work. Um, all the programs they have out there, but I just, I guess I just have problems relating this to uh, the ARP funds in the, the county when it's city property. And yeah. Supervisor Wickham and Supervisor Potoff asked that this be moved forward, requesting a match partner from the city. That was not my instruction. That was your wish. And so I guess the question is, do you need to move forward asking additional information? city is not applying any funds to that. They're saying that they have put funds into the road and everything else, but they're not putting funds towards this project, correct, Ed? Okay. And Supervisor Wickham would like to have them come back and explore a lesser amount. I, this program is not without worth. They do tremendous things for, again, um, folks who need skills and need skill development, this is a great program that does that. It builds our workforce in a unique way. I'm not interested in funding a bathroom. So that's where we got to my colleagues wanting to see if the city would match. The city's not matching. So does that make you a no? Or do we want to get other information and fund something other than a bathroom? I, mean, I would be a no at this time. You're a no. I think we have two no's and a, a maybe, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with your decision if okay, you're willing think, to make one. I think that would be a deny then. Do we want to make a motion on that? or, or do you... If there's interest in having this program come back to us, like we are asking many others to clarify or to revise, then we should do that. I'm not finding, I'm not interested in funding a bathroom. They do good things there. They just didn't write the right application. That was my understanding. It was a gathering Last place uh, in addition to larger scale facilities so that when they have events that have 20 to 200 people that they 
don't have to go into old historic homes and very small bathrooms. In the but, uh, so that that's my scope. It looks like a city problem. <laughs> I, I, like they I said, you, you, you two have defended. Feel, feel free to take the lead. You, know, you don't, you're not, you're not going to hurt me, my feelings at all. Feel free to take the lead. If you want to hear from them again, we can. If how would you like to proceed? I mean, Jay said he would like to hear from them again to see if there's any movement. Uh, maybe they could talk to the city and see if the city would help them. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to join Supervisor Wickham in what he wishes to do. So you wanna move it forward with another work session is what you're saying? If there's something else out there, yeah. Okay. Yes, we'll have another work session with them. Regarding the funding, advise them that uh, obviously I'll need to uh, get with the city and see what kind of funding opportunities they would have there. And I would put Steeple Square right in that same pile. That Steeple Square should be in that conversation. These groups work together. They just didn't, they chose to write individual applications instead of one application. Jay? Related to so Steeple Square and uh, I would prefer to go in order. <laughs> I kind of got lost there myself. Our next one would be the Holy Family Catholic Schools expansion and renovation of Holy Ghost Early Childhood Care Center. I uh, personally think this is a good project. I think it's a much needed uh, niche in the community for daycare, uh, I think they had a good presentation. I think they've done good things. Looks as though um, the awards have been reduced by giving out about a third of the request. So a third of six hundred dollars is two hundred thousand. I see on the spreadsheet there. I just see a comment revised from seven hundred forty-nine thousand. The amount requested is five eighty-five. Is that is that the latest play that you understand? And we certainly have people from Holy Family here as well, but. 585 is the request. Okay, I'm very supportive of that that amount. I think uh, child care is a higher priority, and I like the location and uh, like the other work in on the campus. You know, improving those buildings. I think it's it's good I guess for that I'm area. Not at that amount. Pardon? I'm not at that amount. That's a fully funded request. Well, they were at seven hundred and fifty thousand and dropped it down five eighty five. Because they found other funding opportunities. Right. <clears throat> I'm definitely in support of it. Uh, I would be in support of going for the five hundred thousand. That would be, you know, they have a lot of work to do to remodel and stuff, but uh, I think 500 is a very generous allotment to that uh, program. I'm, I'm comfortable with that amount as well. It's very, very close to their 585 uh, need and uh, revised down from the 750. Would you be okay with that, Ann? I will not vote for half a million dollars, not when I see what's still pending. I would vote for $200,000. Okay. Well, we'll move that forward again. Uh, we're 
put a hold on a tentative uh, discussion on funding amount, but it is moving forward. We're, we're close. So, you know, we're on topic and now we're just talking about money. Okay. So we have three agreed, three yes on fundings. It's a dollar amount and, you know, there is a gap. Don't get me wrong. It's a $300, $300,000 gap from two of us to one of us. I would push to try to get a decision. Otherwise, we just delay our work and we delay right. the applicants. Would three hundred thousand dollars make it unanimous? I could do three hundred thousand. I'm less concerned about it unanimous and more concerned about the project. And so I would be back to your five hundred thousand. We did have two two supervisors that were at that number. And, right. I, uh, I would like to get consensus that we could move it completely forward and be done with it. Uh, I agree, and I voted one hundred thousand dollars for an area that I was at zero at um, to show goodwill. So I understand right. that concept. We just had five hundred thousand of at two supervisors. So I, you know, I didn't bring it down to zero. I Would we have three majority. supervisors at three hundred thousand dollars? I know we'd have two at five hundred. We all agree on four hundred thousand. Make a motion to approve four hundred thousand dollars for Holy Family Catholic Schools. I will second that. A motion and a second to approve four hundred thousand for Holy Family Catholic Schools. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Northeast Iowa Community College Entrepreneurial Resource Hub, $530,546. Motion to approve $400,000. Oh, we're on a roll. Doing good. Uh, I will second that motion. What was it? I'm sorry. And $400,000 to Northeast Iowa for their resource hub. And I will second that $400,000. I have a motion and a second uh, to approve 400000 for Northeast Iowa Community College uh, Entrepreneurial Resource Hub. I would like a little discussion on that first. Yes, um, I think that is a little high because we have the adventure, Creative Adventure Lab in Dyersville, Cascade, and Dubuque, which is working with the entrepreneurs. a lot of money for a duplication of services. Now we have four spots in the county. I funding didn't... for this wouldn't be a physical location. So they would, the, the funding for this would, NICC. would one NICC would be the, right. certainly the host and the, the main applicant. And they would provide services when they say they, the entrepreneurial component of this at each one of those locations, both Cascade, Dyersville, Creative Venture Lab at Dubuque, along with other places that entrepreneurs gather. And so that could be uh, Creative Venture Lab, uh, could be uh, the, uh, I'm drawing a blank, uh, Tim Hitzler's uh, uh, makerspace, uh, could be you know, community, could be at Greater Dubuque, wherever entrepreneurs are. So it's not a physical, there's at least reading their application, there's no physical components of this programming, it's people and, and funding for those entrepreneurs. So I'm supportive of it, but um, in, in those areas, there are some volunteers and some programming in each one of those areas, but it's very ad hoc, infrequent. I received a call from Jason White from Greater Dubuque, who's been attending a lot of these meetings with regard and he made specific reference to me. This is one that he thinks is very valuable. Okay. So I mean, they're not likely to look at it as being duplication. If they saw that, they'd call it out. Well, and that's, that was my concern is we have the duplicate, you know, the duplication efforts, but Jay just explained it, that really it's not, it's, they're actually working with the creative adventure labs, right? Or, yeah. So, you know, so I'm a Northeast Iowa community college employee. So I have insight to, you know, the service they offer. I am on a federal grant, not 
you know, 100% dedicated to that federal grant, so I won't be working on this at all. Um, I obviously be familiar with who is, um, but uh, yeah, those those services related to entrepreneurial services uh, happen in a lot of different places. Okay. But there's no there's no staff that there's no paid staff or dedicated staff in Cascade in Dyersville. There is a staff at the Creative Venture Lab in Dubuque, not 100% or probably even 20 or 30% for entrepreneurial activity. They do a lot of things, as you know. Yeah. Just dumb question on my part. Go for it. Yeah. If you're on a federal grant, and this is a federal grant, that's not a conflict of interest by any means. I won't be receiving any of these funds. Um, so, okay. so my Just program, the Small Business Development Centers of Iowa, won't be receiving any of these funds um, or receiving any of these services. We may service the same clients, but uh, for different things. Okay. I just wanted to... Yeah, no, it's a good question. So we'll, yeah, there's... Yeah, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve 400000 for Northeast Iowa Community College Entrepreneurial Resource Hub. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Thank you. I'll move that forward. Next is Steeple Square, empowering Dubuque economic mobility, food security, and a vibrant future, 500,000. And I believe you said you wanted to move that or hold that for more discussion, similar to the four mounds, was it? Yes. Is that, I mean, we're looking for city help with that or? I think if, again, I believe I asked before that they would write a joint application so that we can see how they work together in collaboration with what they do. Oh, okay. okay. That is not what we've asked them to do. So this is, the, I understood the board to say previously we're going forward with these applications. So this based just on what they've said alone, I would not support it a half a million dollars. So if we have questions about four mounds, I think we have questions about Steeple Square. Maybe we do not. So I guess I understand here. We want to have four mounds and steeple square come in to work together on a grant. Is that what you're saying? My un my understanding of the programs and the applications is that they do work together. Right. So so four mounds, NICC, and steeple square, uh, for sure. It might be one or two others. Um, are in collaboration with the Empowering Dubuque and you know, the programs that they do are the culinary programs, the carpentry programs, and uh, they, they collaborate. The, the essence of one of the components of this is to provide for uh, funding for the meals for the participants of those programs. That's my memory of, of, of one of the components, not the entire component. But but Four Mounds and NICC and Steeple Square are collaborating on this project. The empowering. One of the things that they do that they did ask in this grant is they, um, they do provide stipends. So they pay people who are in the program to complete the program, right? So some folks have to have income, obviously, to be able to go to school, and that's where the meal support comes in. My question's been, why am I giving stipends to a nonprofit? Why am I giving, why am I not just giving stipends to the resource hub or to NICC? Why am I giving stipends through a nonprofit? And the answer back's been, that's how we do it. So, I, I mean, this is not, I, I'm not going to ever be at a half a million dollars for stipends, I'm just not. I would like to see how the programs work together to tell us what the need truly is, because we we are we are attempting to reach workforce issues through these divergent ways that we don't understand completely, and then we're cutting each of their applications down in size. So I don't know what we have left. That's the other reason to pause and say, could you come back in and tell us, given what we're doing, what can you do with it? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that too. Yep. If you want to get with them, Ed, then 
reschedule another work session, put them with uh, four mounds on the same day if possible. Is this all we're going to do today? We, we're approaching yeah. noon and we've yeah. got yeah. I'm high price we've people sitting in the work. seats. We made it a long ways. Yeah. Thank, thank you, colleagues. Uh, Good work. We can move. Uh, Damn libraries are so pesky, so difficult to solve. Closed session then. Books, checkouts. Motion for a five minute recess and we'll go into closed session when we come back. Uh, uh, Chair, we will be uh, exiting Zoom as I think well. You made, did you make a motion? I did. I will second that. A motion and a second uh, to recess for five minutes. All in favor?